Hello and welcome in this new video tutorial in which we are going to model, to texture, to rig and animate a floor sack 3D character in Blender. This is going to be a tribute to what we usually learn to animate when we start 2D character animation, uh, and but I wanted to translate it in 3D. So this is the end result of this tutorial. We are going to create this from A to Z, from start to finish. This tutorial is a long one and it's normal because 3D takes time. You're going to see everything it takes to create a shot like this in real time with my explanations and thought process. Remember to take breaks, it's really important, to experiment, to do your own research and have fun. It can be intimidating for beginners at the beginning, but with passion and time, you'll get there. Uh, I would like to apologize for my French accent. As you may have heard, I'm not a native English speaker. If you have any trouble following what I'm doing, you can always look at the shortcuts that will appear in the bottom right corner of the viewport. Uh, as you can see, every key that I'm pressing and every clicks that I'm doing with my mouse are represented there. So let's start by modeling our character. I'm going to select the default cube, then pressing tab in order to enter in edit mode. And by pressing S and Y, I'm going to change the depths of the box. Pressing Z, uh, S and Z, I'm going to change the height. And then I can put my character above the ground by pressing G and Z like this. Now using the face select mode by pressing the three key, you can also click on those buttons in order to switch between vertex, edge and face selection. Uh, using the face selection, I'm going to select the top one and pressing S, I'm going to uh, scale it a bit to taper uh, a bit the, my box. Now I'm going to add a mirror modifier in order to use symmetry. Uh, this will be really useful because I can model only one side and everything is going to be replicated on the other one. Uh, in order to do this, I'm going to add a loop cut by pressing Ctrl R. And this loop cut, uh, I don't want to move it. So in this step, I can cancel the, the motion, basically the displacement. So I can press the right click or the escape key in order to uh, put it in the center. Now I'm going to split uh, my mesh along this selection. In order to do this, I can press the V key and as you can see, it breaks my model in two parts, but I don't want to move uh, this part. So I will cancel the motion by pressing the right click. But my mesh is uh, split is being splitted in two parts right now. I can deselect everything. I, I can put my mouth my mouse on the on this part pressing L in order to select the linked uh, geometry and I can press X and uh, delete the vertices. I now have um, only one side of my model and I'm going to enter in the uh, modifiers section and add a mirror modifier. And as you can see now, everything that I'm doing on one side is being mirrored on the other one. Only one thing that I'm going to do uh, for in the mirror modifier is to activate the, the clipping option. As you can see by default, uh, the vertices in the center are not welded together. So we are going to use the clipping option. So the vertices in the center are only lying on the Y and Z plane and they are perfectly welded together. So now I'm going to add uh, another loop cut that is going to separate the chest part of my character and the belly part. To do so, I'm going to press Ctrl R again, and I'm going to slide this loop just a little bit above the middle of my character like this. And from the side view, by pressing the three key, I'm going to push this selection uh, in the front and I'm going to rotate it a bit. And uh, by pressing Alt Z, I can enter in X-ray mode. This allows me to uh, select through, so I can deselect by pressing Alt A. Um, you can see the shortcut there again. And by pressing the B key, I can select uh, using this box selection method. And as you can see, this allows me to select through uh, the, the mesh. So this is really useful. You will see me always going um, back and forth uh, between the X-ray mode and the solid mode. 
The solid mode basically won't allow you to, to select vertices in the back, but using X-ray, you can see that I, I'm allowed to do so. So from the side view, I can deselect everything, select the top part, and I'm going to align a bit the top of the floor sack like this. So maybe this is a bit high, so I'm going to select the top and I'm going to lower it down a bit. Yes, yeah, something like this is better for me. Now what I will do is add a subdivision surface modifier. We are going to go back in object mode. We are going to add a modifier that is going to be the subdivision surface. And as you can see, it will uh, help us to make a rounder model. We can increase the level here. Uh, let's increase it to three. And we can also press right click on uh, in the viewport and use the shade smooth option uh, in order to have um, a smooth surface. What I don't want though is in edit mode, I don't want to see the subdivision surface. So I will disable the option only for edit mode by pressing this button. So I will be uh, able to, to, to look at the real geometry. Uh, this is much better and I will really advise to do so. But as soon as, we, as I will press tab and go back in object mode, as you can see, I'm going to see the results. So this is something that I will do a lot in order to check the, the result. But I will be uh, really, it will be really, uh, it will be better to see the, the real topology here. So now we can go in face mode, select the sides, and we can scale a bit the side to, to taper the, the, this side. And we can also push it a little bit, bit toward the back by pressing G and Y. And now we are going to add more definition to this model. I'm going to add two edge loops there and two edge loops there. And each time you are adding something uh, in your model, you should one way or, not, or another uh, change uh, the geometry that you've added. You, you need to feed it uh, in your model. It's really important that it's not uh, put like this and that you, you consider it okay. As you can see, the result is not really uh, organic and we don't want this. But before finishing that, I'm going to add one cut there and two cut in the bottom and I'm going to select everything and I'm going to press right click and use the smooth vertex option. This is going to relax the geometry that we've selected. But one thing to notice is that I you don't you won't have this option in the face selection as you can see there is no smooth uh, vertices uh, option so we are going to save this option in the quick favorite menu so you press uh, right click while in vertex selection mode you right click again on the on the option that you want to save to your quick favorite and you add it to your quick favorite because I've already added it's already there. So if I'm pressing Q, you can see that in my quick favorite, I have the smooth vertex option and I can press Q, left click, Q, left click, Q, left click. And you can see that my mesh is going to re be relaxed a bit. Okay. So now I'm going to um, modify the this geometry to, to have a better shape language overall. And to do so, I'm just going to push vertices around uh, it's really important to note that you need to to move uh, your viewports and to to look around your model from every uh, point of view uh, when you start modeling uh, a character uh, it's going to be um, very messy at the beginning or at least not very appealing at the beginning and it's a very iterate iterative process you need to push things. You need to like like if you were using Play-Doh. You you need to push things to construct things, and step by step you're going to 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 have a um, much nicer forms and a, a much nicer model. But if you don't spend the time looking around, pushing things, stretching things, um, and compensating for the geometry that you have uh, that you added, sorry you are not going to have a, a good looking model. So as you can see, I'm looking around, I'm pushing things, I'm going into face mode, for instance, for in order to select this and push the belly, I'm looking from the bottom to see the curves that this is creating. 
um, I'm going to round a bit the, the, the back. I'm going to add another cut here to, to, to create, a, um, how can I say, a very, very marked transition, I would say. And I can also use the, um, the proportional editing by pressing the O key. As you can see, it's also this button there. And when I'm using the proportional editing, it's acting like a soft selection. As you can see, when I'm moving, there is a circle around the mouse. And uh, if I'm scrolling my mouse wheel, you can see that I can, I, I can change the radius. You can also press minus and plus, but it's not working in this case on the numpad. But as you can see, uh, so no, it's page up, page down, sorry. Uh, but I'm never using that, I'm always using the mouse wheel. And uh, you can see that it's going to to help you achieve very organic uh, forms and very organic uh, a very organic flow in your topology. The topology is the term describing the organization, the... the, the Organization, uh, the uh, the composition, if you want, of your of your vertices, uh, it's the um, it's the way the, the 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 loops that you are creating are describing the shapes that you want to represent. It's important to have a, a proper topology uh, in any modeling in any at least organic model that you that you are creating because uh, when deforming the character later on uh, it's going to react uh, to uh, the topology that you have so if you have a really bad topology and you have a, uh, it's working it's working well while being static but when deforming it creates bad creases or uh, the, for instance, the eyes are not able to close or the cheek is not working or things like this, it's going to, to be very hard to rig and even not possible. So as you can see, I'm going al along my model, I'm pressing tab often to, to see the result using the subdivision surface. I can see that here uh, I would like to have two cuts instead of one so what i can do is i can use the bevel tool by pressing ctrl b i can uh, split this edge in two as you can see so i'm going to split it like this i can select the the, the belly face and i'm going to push it a bit to emphasize the belly part of my character and yes basically it's this step i cannot teach you uh, a very uh, one method for doing this it's the idea is really you look around, you push things, you you tweak things. You, you need to to carefully watch at the lines that your um, geometry is, the lines that your topology are following. So in this case, you can see that this line is uh, quite smooth. This line too, this line is quite a bit jaggy there, so I can push it like this. So yes, each time you can see something in your model that is a bit, uh, how can I say, a bit uh, destroyed or a bit off, you can just tweak it and it's going to help you uh, in the long time uh, to, 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 to model much nicer shapes. So as you can see here, it's going too high so I can move it up and down. And I think like this, we are in good shape. Of course, we are going to add tons of things. So don't be in love with, with with what you are doing right now. It's really important to 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 know that everything that you are doing, you can change it and you can adjust it. So I know that a lot of beginners are worried about uh, they are doing something and it turned up looking bad, but they don't want to change it because they spent a lot of time and you've put the effort tweaking vertices uh so you th you think that it, that's it i've done it once and it's done but this process uh why when modeling or when doing 3d it's very iterative again so now what we are going to do is uh plan the geometry for the eyes so to do so we are going to add one more cut here and we are going to deselect everything by pressing alt a maybe we will have to add one more edge loop there, but you can see that now I have too much edge loops 
here in terms of my body, it's going to stretch. You can see it even in the uh, in the object mode with the highlight of the of the default light here. So what I'm going to do is before uh, creating the geometry for the eye, I'm going to slide this loop and I'm going by pressing G twice. I'm going to select this loop by pressing double click on it. By double clicking on it, if you can't, if you cannot double click on a loop in order to select it, you can also press um, Alt click. Um, if you didn't have the, if you don't have the emulate three button mouse option, in the preferences here by pressing F4, you have in the input section, you have the emulate three button mouse option. This allows you to navigate in Blender using the industry standard way of navigating in a viewport. By pressing Alt and left click, you can rotate around. And by double clicking an edge, uh, it's going to try to select the edge loop that is connected to, to this. So I prefer to double click on an edge loop to select it rather, rather than clicking on the Alt key. Okay, so everything now is a bit uh, better in terms of um, space within those loops. And now here I'm going to create geometry for the eye. What I'm going to do is create what we call the mask. Uh, so the mask is um, going to be, maybe I'm going to select, uh, let, me, let me think. Yes, I'm going to select this geometry or maybe maybe this geometry and i'm going to press i in order to inset uh this those faces uh and in order to take the mirror modifier into account i'm going to press b in order to turn off the boundary uh, i can left click to validate and what i've done is in face mode you can see that i've created this face loop and this is a face loop that is going to go around the eyes and it's going to define the cheeks and uh, this is going to be uh, um, separating the eyes the, the eye um, section uh, from the the eyebrows and the cheek so this is a really important topology uh, line topological line so now that we've added it we're going to shape it the way we want so don't worry about the speed that I'm um, putting there in order to manipulate my thing. Take your time. You can see that what I'm doing, what I'm visualizing in my head is this line. Uh, I'm, I'm taking vertices by pressing Alt B, I'm moving them using G. Uh, when you move them, you're moving, the, you're moving uh, along the view that you are looking through. So uh, when pressing G, you can see that I'm moving the vertex in this angle, in this view angle so that's why i'm always i'm constantly turning around so if i want to push the corners of uh of my side here i can push them in this view and i will be sure that they are going to be pushed back okay if you want to to look at the top it's also a good indication for the turns that your shapes are going to do so here basically i'm just modeling the eyebrows I'm placing them at least, and I'm, 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 I will be also pushing the cheeks so I can go in face mode here and I can push the cheek in front like this. Okay, don't worry about the things now. It's okay if it's a bit messy. We are not done yet and we have tons of options to clear everything later. The part of the muzzle I want to push it in front, so I'm selecting many vertices. And from the side, I'm going to create like a sort of curve like this. And you can see that it starts to resemble a face mask. Okay, so now I'm going to select this vertex, I'm going to delete it. And you can see that I have a circle kind of shape here that will represent uh, the eye socket. So in order to model the eye, what I will do is I will add a sphere uh, by pressing uh, Alt uh, Shift A, sorry. I'm going to add a UV sphere 
And in the options for the UV sphere in the bottom left here, I'm going to add 16 segments and eight rings. We don't need uh, more than that. And I'm going to rotate the sphere a 90 degree on the X axis by pressing R and X and 90, typing 90 on the numpad. And you can see that the eye, uh, the eye race part of my eye is going to point uh, in this direction. So it's pretty okay. So now I'm going just for, as a reference, I'm going to add a material that is going to be uh, sclera, called sclera. Sclera is the white of the eye. Uh, it's the white part of the eye. And we are going to add another one. And this is going to be iris. And this is going to be black. But we won't see it in the viewport unless we go down here in the, in the bottom and we enable the color for the viewport display. So we are going for the viewport display to uh, put a dark color also. This is uh, because we will be in solid mode, in solid view, view, viewport rendering. So this is this button here, the viewport shading. You can also go in EV, uh, in material, um, I don't remember the name, in the material viewport shading. And you can also uh, go into EV uh, like this, or you can press the Z key too, in order to have a pie menu that is going to show you the, the, the option. So I'm pressing usually Z and going in solid mode like this. So I'm going to scale this eye. I'm going to place the eye in object mode, something like this. We'll do the trick right now. And as I told you, we created two materials and the second materials is for the iris. So I'm going to select the iris and I'm going to assign this material. And I'm going also to scale it a bit, to scale this selection a bit, to make it a bit wider. And I'm going to press right click, shade smooth, and also adding a subdivision surface. Just uh, the shortcut for adding a subdivision surface is control one or control two, control three, control four, etc. In fact, control one is going to create a subdivision surface with one level, control two, two level, control three, three level, etc., etc. You get it. But now I'm going to place the eye right there and in order to mirror it to the other side i'm going to add a mirror modifier but i'm going to mirror it before subdividing it it's going to be more effective and i'm going in the mirror object to select the body uh, which represent the objects that i want to mirror my object onto so maybe i can uh, put the eyes more toward the center and now i have uh, two temporary eyes I'm going to select my object back, press tab to enter in edit mode, and I'm then going to select this geometry, scale it a bit, and extrude by pressing E and scale. So extruding something means uh, from your selection to elongate if you want some geometry that will be connected to it. And in this case, I've extruded and scale it down to create this other loop like this. So I'm going to select the inner loop by double clicking on it. And what I've done basically here in terms of workflow is I've protected the mask and I've protected the eyes, okay, with one loop and the other. And I've also defined here, I have a, a definition of a line that is going to flow through the center here, representing the, the nose part. So I'm going to select again this loop and now I'm going to activate the snapping option here or pressing shift tab. And I'm going to snap on, to on faces. And I'm using align rotation to target, project individual elements, move, rotate, and scale. This is going to allow us to, to project our selection onto other objects. So you can see that when I'm selecting this vertex and pressing G, it's going to move, but being snapped onto my eyeball. This is pretty convenient because I can start modeling my eye really quick, quickly by, you can see, putting the eyelids on top. This is just temporary. Uh, of course, we are going to tweak everything. I'm going to disable uh, the um, snapping option by pressing Shift Tab again. And now, as I said, very iterative process. I'm going to uh, compensate for the new geometry. I'm going to push and pull vertices around 
I'm going to try to do my best with the geometry that I have to compensate for this new geometry and integrate it in the flow of my character. Okay, so of course I don't want <laughs> my uh, my loop to be snapped directly on the eye. So from the side view, by pressing also Alt Z, I'm going to rotate it a bit and I'm going to extrude it, scale it down, and I'm going to create the thickness uh, of the eyelid. After that, I can scale it a bit and try to, to, to put the eye inside. And for the corners, I'm going to push them back because from the side view it creates a top plane and a bottom plane and you you you, you should remember that the um, the eyelids have thickness and the eye lies inside with the cornea here and the bottom eyelid is always uh, in the back compared to the front so if I, I put a straight line for the top eyelid, you can see that it goes forward the bottom eyelid. Okay. Let me remove my annotations like this. So that's what I'm looking for when modeling this. Okay, I'm going to push this in 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 this in the inner. The corner of the eye inside like this and you can see that i don't have that much geometry it's okay for now uh, i don't need more for now i'm going to select this and push it back a bit inside i'm looking when, when i'm doing this i'm looking at the flow of this line you can see that it's it was started to it started to to look a bit um messy around there so i can I can tweak it because i'm seeing it and I'm then going to add another loop there. And the cool thing is that this loop is just going to help me to create the, the corner of the eye. I can add one more there too and select those vertices and create like a more vertical, vertical line here for the eyelid. I clearly need another loop there. So I'm going to select this loop uh, that is going to wrap around my mesh. And I'm going to use the bevel option by pressing Ctrl B and I'm going to split it into like this. Then I'm going to select the geometry there. And as you can see, by rotating, turning, pushing, filling the form, I'm able to shape the lead. It's really a matter of going around, going on top, knowing the shape that you're looking for. Here I know that I'm going for an eyelid that has thickness. So I'm doing that this way. Here, if I want to focus my view on the selection, I can press the period key on the numpad. And now I'm rotating around this. And you can see that I can push this inside a bit more for the corner of the eye. For the eyelid, I, I can push a bit the eyebrow on top. It's just a matter of, again, turning, turning around, pushing things. There is no perfect, it's not, it's not a perfect science. You need to look to have uh, your own artistic judgment for this. And here you've noticed that the line that I've added is going to crease a bit my geometry in the back and in the front. So what I can do is I can use the circle select by pressing C and you, you, you've noticed that I've switched in face mode by pressing three and I can circle select some geometry there and I can press Q and smooth a bit this geometry. Is going to relax a bit the geometry that I've added. I can push this inside a bit to create the spine. Maybe I can select 
all those vertices. There is a really cool way in Blender to select a line. You can select a point, uh, a vertex, you can press Ctrl and click to another one. It's going to select the shortest path between those two points. So this gives me access to this selection that I can push back a bit inside. Okay, right now what we can do is we can move things around and we can select the inner loop of the eyelid. We can extrude it, scale it and push it back uh, in the eye. We can also extrude it uh, once more and we can using smooth multiple time, we can smooth it and scale it again. As you can see, it's going to, to work perfectly for what we have to do. And from the side, I really need to, to be sure that my eyelid is, uh, my top eyelid is in front of the bottom eyelid and it's not the case. You can see there is a pretty big gap between them. So what I will do is I will select the inner loop of the eye, pressing Ctrl plus multiple times. This is going to expand the selection. And from the side view, I can rotate everything to make my top eyelid in front of the bottom one. Okay. This is going to be modified here a bit. And I'm going to realign some loops. So here the flow is going to be realigned. Same thing for here as much as possible. Remember to, it's really important again to, f to move around your mesh to go in the in the view that does that does represent the best viewpoint for you to to move your things around so something like this in my case will do the trick okay i think i can select the outer loop of the mask so it's uh, in in many cuts as you can see because we have poles here um, to, that that will terminate the the edge loop so i can double click here press shift double click here press shift double click here and i will scale the mask a, just a touch and i will add a new cut in the middle there then i will select this loop press shift this loop and press q and smooth this to uh, relax a bit this geometry and then using edge um, no, no, maybe using face I'm going to select the eyelid and I'm going to push uh, this in front like this and then tweaking for everything that I've made like this Okay, so it starts to look um, look more and more decent, but we still need now to go back in our mind in the artistic side of things, and we will have to now judge um, the the proportions of this eye. So what I'm going to do is by pressing Alt O, I'm going to enable the connected proportional editing. So Alt O is basically uh, switching this option uh, connected only here. It's the shortcut and pressing O, you can activate the proportional editing and um, the connected only option gives you access to a mode where you can only move the geometry that is around that is connected around uh, the selection that you've made. So in this case, you can see that I'm not moving uh, I'm not moving uh, bottom vertices here. If I didn't have this option, pressing Alt O, you can see there is a dot in the icon in the center. You can see that the points are moving down there. So I'm pressing Alt O to use the only connected method. And I'm going to now shape my eyelid a bit better. I'm really looking for what we call apex 
for the curves, apex are the top part of, of curves. So if you look at an eye, especially Pixar's eyes, for instance, you will see that they have um, they have um, curves that are very clearly defined. There are there there is a really good reference that I can share in the description from uh, Pixar's Coco, uh, where they show how they have designed the the eye and where are the 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 top part of the curves uh, in order to to make the eyes look really nice and. Uh, this is uh, what I'm looking for here. So you can see that I'm trying to get the corner of the eye right there. And once I've modeled using proportional editing, I can readjust by disabling the proportional editing. And I can reshape my flow. So modeling is always a question of going back and forth between um, artistic and technical. So in this case, I think that the eyes could be closer together. So I'm going to select uh, using Alt Z, I'm going to select the inner loop of my eye that I can put down by the way. And I'm going to press Ctrl plus multiple time and I'm going to press O uh, to activate the proportional editing. I'm going to scale my mouse to increase the size of this. And I'm going to put this a bit toward the inside a bit more and I'm going to push the eye more toward the inside so no after after thought after thought <laughs> it's not that great so I'm going to just to push the eye a bit inside maybe rotate it a bit just like this okay so one thing that I want to do is for sure I don't want to see the top part here of the eyelid because from the front it, we, we don't see it. We see the bottom one but we don't see the top. So pressing Alt Z I can access the geometry below also in, in, in the back so I can push also this behind. Maybe I can push this more toward the inside of the eye. and push it back then. And now for sure I will have to add one more loop cut here um, to add thickness. Let me increase the space over there. I can also using the circle select and the face mode I can also select only this and pressing smooth in order to relax the geometry. And I'm going to push this more toward the center of my character and I'm going to select some loops there. Be careful not to select the back of the, of the mesh. When you're selecting something, you can always move around to see if you're uh, using perspective to see if you're selecting the right thing. So as you can see here, I'm probably all right. I'm going to lower the eye down a bit and I'm going to push this eyelid back a bit because it's too present. As you can see, I've automatically added the proportional editing option. And from the side, I, I think it's going to be all right for now. So I'm going to add one loop cut more on top of this. And um, maybe I can select the edge of the bottom by pressing the two key. I'm entering in edge selection mode. By pressing shift, I can add to my selection. And pressing G twice, I'm going to slide this lower eyelid to smooth it a bit. It was a bit uh, too, pro too too important. And then maybe here I can, uh, without the proportional editing, I can push it back a bit to create the crease of the eyelid. Maybe, you know what, I'm going to lower down everything there so it's, it, we have more room and it's more, it's less sharp, less 
increased. Same thing for here, maybe I can give it a bit more space. And for the thickness of the eyelid, I will um, push that down a bit. So it creates a rounder shape using the, the subdivision surface. I'm going to push the corner inside a bit more. And selecting the inner loop there, I can also scale it down a bit on the z-axis to create a, a, a thicker eyelid. Maybe not that much, but like this, it's probably going to be all right. Okay, so we spent a lot of time on the eyes, but um, as we always say, uh, the eyes are the window to the soul, so it's really important to get them right. Um, now we will spend a bit more time on other things and we are probably going to come back to the facial features. So we, the, the other features that our floor sack will have is the little knot that we have, uh, that, that it has, that he has or she has on the, on the corners. So in order to do so, I'm going to um, think about my geometry, my flow. So I know that I will have to add one loop cut here because it's going to maintain the geometry a bit better. I'm going to scale it a touch just to incorporate it correctly. And I'm going to uh, think about how to uh, place my geometry. So probably I'm going to select this and pressing I to create an inset. I can scale everything after my inset and I will use a really cool add-on that gives me access to um, many tools that are very useful, such as the circle uh, option, the flatten option. It's called Mesh Loop Tool. If you press F4 in the preferences and go to add-on, you can uh, pick the loop, Mesh Loop Tool add-on. You can just enable it like this. And now if you're pressing right click, you have access to the loop tools and you can click on circle and it will create a circle based on your selection. This is quite awesome. So now what we can do from that is just select uh, adjust for the geometry again, something like this. And you can also from that maybe scale it a bit more, extrude the selection, scale it, and now from that, we're going to extrude, scale, extrude, uh, like this, scale, extrude, 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 scale. And this is going to create the top, um, the knot for the top. So this is just the basic topology. Now we are going to select our knot by double clicking any um, edge loop there. And by pressing Ctrl plus, we can um, expand the selection. And we are going to relax everything by pressing uh, the famous uh, smooth operator. <laughs> and now uh, I'm going to realign this using proportional editing. I can select my thing by pressing Alt Z. I can select through uh, proportional editing. I can scale my 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 brush with my with my mouse wheel, and I'm going to try to push uh, this. Uh, like this. And of course, I'm disabling the proportional editing and I'm going to reincorporate everything uh, much better like this, trying not to lose the shapes that I've created. Again, modeling is very, it's a very iterative process. Push and pull things. I can scale this loop a bit. So here for the notes, I'm going to add one more loop. This is going to crease this part. And what I want is a nice S shape, not a C shape like this. So to create this shape, I'm going to scale there, probably going to scale there too, but I'm going to need to add some geometry, some more geometry there like this. So let's also select everything and let's inflate it. To inflate something, you can scale it along the normal by pressing Alt S. You can see it inflates the thing that you've selected. And we are going to again scale some loops so it betters 
it so it better works with what we've done. And here I'm going to extrude the top part once more by entering into face mode and I'm going to push this vertex a bit more to make it a bit more pointier. And again, I want this S shape. I want the curve to be wider here and less wide and thinner toward the bottom. So here it's the artistic side, the artistic part of me that is talking. I'm going to add one more cut here, thinner there. Yes, it's much better like this, I think. Okay, so we also are going to uh, scale this. So I'm going to sell, select it using my proportional editing. I'm going to scale it a bit. And as you can see, I need to readjust some, some things here and there. Okay, something like this. Um, one thing that I've noticed and that I'm not really happy with is that the eyes are maybe too low. So I'm going to destroy this loop by selecting it and pressing X. I can remove the edge loop. As you can see, it's still being, uh, it's, it's, it's still connecting the rest perfectly. And I'm going to select using the circle select and the X-ray mode. I'm going to paint my selection like this. And I'm going to lower down the intensity of the proportional editing and I'm going to move my eyes a bit higher to the top. Therefore, I'm going to move my eyes to, to the top. Okay, so now I want to <laughs> remove the baggy effect, the bags uh, of the eyes for my character. He looks really um, tired. <laughs> It's my case, but I don't want <laughs> that, it's that it becomes his case. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to press Q and smooth multiple time. It's going to remove a bit the effect, not that much, but a, just a touch in our case. And I'm going to select this, those edges using the shortest path method, pressing control again. Huh? And here, one thing that I've noticed is that I want the iris to touch the bottom to be more toward the center. And therefore, I will need to adjust using the proportional edit editing. I will need to adjust my eyelids along the rest. So one thing that you can do if you're, if you want to be very precise in a certain aspect of your modeling, you can isolate things. So in this case, I'm going to press Ctrl plus multi multiple times. Uh, with one loop selected and I can press shift H to remove everything else. And you can see that now I have a much, much better view. Uh, and in my case, in this case, I can see better what I'm doing and I can see the, the right uh, vertices, the right geometry that I need to move. So just pulling and pushing the corner inside. Remember that you have geometry inside and that it, it's, it's stretching the geometry too. Here, it's probably best if I push it back in the front. Here it's very tight, but it's meant to be in this case because we have a crease. And I'm going to add more space on top of the eye. And also by pressing Alt H, I can uh, make the other parts come back. And using the proportional editing, I'm going to 
wrap this part more around the eye. By selecting the corner of the eye, I can push it like this. I think it works better. Remember that the eye is very, very round. It, it wraps around the sphere. And from the side, I really want this eyelid to come in front. So yes, in this case, I feel it's going to be much better. So I can push vertices around there, making maybe the top lid a bit more important. I can maybe push the corner, the outer corner of the eye a bit higher to make it more happy. To make my character look more happy, happy, sorry. And I'm going to also try to, uh, without the proportionality thing, to create a more important mass for the lower eye. Uh, so to do so, I'm going to select some few vertices and you can see I'm going to push them. My goal here is to really get what I want and then correct the, the mistakes that I've done by doing so. So like this, it's going to flow much more toward the chicks. It's, it's looking much better, I think. So yes, yeah, something like this is definitely going in the right direction for me. Maybe I can push this more inside. Maybe I can also bring the the eyebrows shape at least the eyebrows a bit better so as you can see again it's not that difficult it's just push and pull and your artistic sense maybe here I can fix this flow Push that toward more the inside. And from using X-ray, I can also bring the inside more straight. Remember that here it's more straight and here it's more round like this. Just a matter of taking your time, pushing things around, looking around. And one thing that I will want is also to have a better, a sharper uh, section there. So to make that, I'm going to select this loop and I'm going to bevel it by pressing Ctrl B. And as you can see, it's going to sharpen the corner of the eye, but it's also going to, to sharp sharpen everything else. So what I'm going to do while it's selected, I'm going to enter in X-ray mode and by pressing C, I can use the middle mouse button and deselect some edges there. And now I'm going to use the smooth operator multiple times. And I'm going to push that back a bit. And you can see that it looks much better. It's, it's wider behind even though it's still a bit tight. So I'm going to select some vertices and press smooth again. And by hand, I'm going to realign some loops. So I'm really watching for those lines, trying to, to find the perfect curvature. Maybe it went too far there in terms of the corner. So I'm going to pull it back. With the front. Just 
just take your time. Put music. <laughs> and it's going to and the job is going to be done. Of course, here I'm doing the things a bit fast, but if you're doing it slowly, it's okay too. It's not there is no rush doing this. So just take your time, watch it from every angle. And with time and practice, it's going to be uh, second nature for you. Okay, so now that we've worked again a bit on the on the eyes, um, we are going to maybe maybe you know what I'm going to take the corners and push it a bit more inside so the eyes are less wide. This was a bit wide, so I can do that. Uh, for sure, I know that we'll I, that I will have more geometry inside, so I'm going to add one more loop cut here because when deforming the eyes, will this will stretch the 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 leads will stretch, so it's important for me to add them right now and to also accommodate for that in the sections where it's very tight. Okay, so now we are going to select uh, the top part here by pressing C and uh, Alt Z and C Alt Z to go into um, X-ray mode and C I can select everything there. And you know what? I'm going to select this too. And I'm going to Shift D to duplicate it and I'm going to rotate it and incorporate it in the bottom right there. So. Uh, if I'm looking at this from the top, it's probably more toward the front. So in this case, I'm going to remove this vertex and by pressing X, I can delete the vertex and I'm going to place my corner like this, maybe making it a bit wider like this. And I can select this edge, shift select this edge and pressing Control E, I can bridge edge loop. And as you can see, it's going to try to match um, the, the loop of my, uh, both my loop, it's trying to connect them and it's actually working perfectly in this case. I can adjust my geometry as always. Maybe making it closer to this one and here I can add another edge loop that I can scale on the y-axis like this. And I am going to again push and pull things in edge and vertex mode with whatever with whatever selection mode fits the best with my workflow. So here I'm going to select this loop, this loop, pressing smooth a bit just to, to smooth everything, to relax everything. I can push this edge loop toward the back. Maybe this loop here, if I deselect in X-ray mode, if I deselect everything but but this, I can slide it. In, you see, to just to compensate for the for the space in the back, I can do the same thing here using the shortest selection path, and I can also maybe using the proportional editing. Uh, add more mass to the to the butt part.
make your forms round. Same thing here, I can push the belly. I want, I want my character to have a, a, a bit of a belly. It's going to be more interesting to animate. Push it a bit from the top. Here you can see it starts to flow down. Maybe I need to split this edge loop in two to create the roundness that I'm looking for. And also I can select everything but the everything but the ears, the legs, and the eyes. So I'm selecting back this, 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 and this, and I can press Q and relax everything. You can see it starts to, to look a bit better. And one thing that's, that uh, you need to notice is that when you relax something in Blender, uh, it will actually, um, you will actually lose volume, lose some volume. So you can press Alt S to, without the proportional editing to, to, to gain back this volume a, a bit. Okay, so I guess it's starting to look uh, much better. I can here uh, select the lower lead plus the chick. Again, smooth it a bit. Especially there, I want it to flow it down a bit more. Making sure again that the top lid goes in front of the bottom lip, of the bottom, the, the top eyelid, sorry, in front of the, the bottom eyelid. Maybe I can add once more a loop around here and making it uh, flow more toward the bottom. Again, using the shortest selection path I can do this kind of thing. And here, this gives me a way to really easily sharpen the 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 ridge of the um, of the eyebrows not that happy with the way this is flowing so i'm going to smooth it once more and from the side i'm going to check if everything looks right it looks Okay, but I can push the muzzle in front, in, in the back, sorry, a bit more. And I can try to make a better looking curve here. Okay, so one more thing here for the for the, the legs, the bottom nuts, I'm going to remove one loop by selecting it and pressing X, edge loop. I'm going to push this a bit uh, to the top. I want to shorten basically the, the, the legs, but I'm going to inflate them by pressing Alt S and again, finding the, the, the right curve here. This is going to do I think a much better job and using the proportional editing I can flatten one side and open the other one this is going to represent a foot in a much better way because when we were when we will bend this foot we'll have something like this 
and this is going to to be easier to to shape when animating when finding the poses of the foot okay maybe from here i can shorten the side using the proportional editing again. So I've removed a bit of volume around the head. And again, moving, pushing, pulling things. Here, I can smooth a bit more, maybe with this part. And I will try to fix here some very harsh angles. Again, this tutorial is not meant to show you step-by-step uh, -step, uh, follow me tutorial everything that I'm doing I'm doing it for my own model you should uh, apply the the idea uh, of what I'm doing and not uh, follow pose step-by-step -step and <laughs> replicate what I'm doing uh, you will of course learn nothing you need to grasp the workflow and the concept if you want more than the the step by step you don't want to copy you want to you you, you can copy of course the, the character that i'm doing but you need to copy it on your set on your side not following uh, step by step what i'm doing you need to just adjust for your own model the things that you are seeing not the things that i'm doing here i'm going to push the side of the cheek of the eye to, to, to form the cheek a bit more and I'm going to rounder to, to make the, the cheek a bit rounder you can see it creates a, a nice bump And I think that for this part, we will call it done because we have a lot of things to do, <laughs> a lot of other things to do. Okay, so last thing, maybe I can push this where it takes a bit more with the subdivision surface it's going to be more pointier like this okay so now what i want to do is to texture to unwrap this little guy and don't worry we still we will still be able to 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 tweak it a bit in terms of modeling if we need to later on but um I want to to tweak this little guy to 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 unwrap this little guy, and um, and to make it uh, textured. Maybe this the this is too 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 much in terms of size. Maybe I can just inflate it a bit and make it less important. Same thing for the bottom leg. I was a bit uh, heavy in my in my proportions. Maybe like this, it's 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 more. It's looking better. From the three quarter, I'm also looking for the 
the bump here if it's working fine. Okay, so let's just texture this little guy, but in order to texture it, we have to unwrap it, meaning to uh, unwrap the UVs. So to unwrap the UVs, what we'll do is pretty simple. We will select the edge that is going through the mesh. We are going to press Ctrl E um, and mark seams, mark seam, sorry. We are also going to select this and mark seam. We are also going to select this loop and mark seam. And for the inner leg, we are going to select this edge there and we are going to remove it. So we are going to clear the seam. Why am I doing this? It's because imagine that you select the um, all this part there and that you put a, a, a you, you cut here with a knife, you open this shape flat, it's going to um, to be unwrapped from there and this is going to open pretty nicely and evenly. So we are going to do the same thing from there. Here we are going to remove this cut from the seam. Control E clear seam. And you can see that from there it's going to be cut uh, from there and it's going to open uh, nicely. From this view, you can see that we will have this, we will have this, it's going to be fine. Now we can save. <laughs> I'm going to call it Florisac. And we can apply the mirror modifier by putting our mouse over it and pressing Ctrl A. And now, as you can see, we no longer have the mirror. Um, modifier but we can still by using this option enable symmetry when modeling so it's not going to work if we add some geometry but you can see that if the model is perfectly symmetrical we can still uh, tweak some stuff okay so we are not lost completely if we want to to adjust the the character so let's unwrap it we are going to go in the uv editing section select everything press u unwrap and you can see uh, we have unwrapped perfectly our, our model. Now pressing this button, we can go into island uh, selection and I'm going to, using the control key, I can snap and I can press R and rotate my islands. I can adjust them like this. It truly doesn't matter if you where you place them here, it's not meant to, to be a video game model. And you can just find the space that you, you have and adjust them like this. But it's better if you lie them um, on an axis. And in this case, uh, it's going to be close to symmetrical here. Okay, so we have UV unwrapped our model. Uh, and now we are going to texture it. Um, just to show you what I've shown, what, what I've explained, if I'm selecting by going into face mode and pressing L over one ear, uh, here this uh, seam that you can see on the outer edge here, it's exactly this cut. So imagine that again you've cut here, it's being opened like this and it rolls around uh, its center, if you want, its center axis, and it like basically unwraps and flatten on the UVs. And that's exactly why we've done this. Okay, so now that we have this, what I want to, to do is to paint a tileable texture uh, for our character. Uh, and this is going to be a fabric, a kind of fabric texture. And in order to do this, I'm going to plug my tablet and we are going to do this Inside Blender, it's not going to be the perfect way to, to do it. If you prefer to use uh, some to, uh, dedicated tools such as Photoshop or Krita, uh, you will have much more control, but we can do it in Blender. So let's do it in Blender. 
and we also are going to paint an eye in Blender and we are going to apply uh, everything into the sh into a shader uh, for our floor, floor sack and also we are going to create a, a shader for the eye. So let's do that, let's plug the graphic tablet. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is go in the texture paint section and we are going to just paint a texture in this view. So I'm going to press new and I am going to call this texture fabric uh, text and I can um, change the size of the width and height and a nice way to do this is you can select the slider, drag down and you can press times two and it's going to do the, the, the thing for the for the two um, the slider at once and I'm going to put a mid-gray uh, color for the background and pressing OK. So if you're using a tablet, a graphic tablet, in the preferences I really advise you to um, press the emulate through button mouse uh, option because when you are uh, using a tablet you don't want to click on the middle mouse button or set up your stylus to have the middle mouse button. So now you can navigate using Ctrl and Alt to zoom. You can press Alt and drag around, and this is uh, uh, and of course you can use your left click to 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 sculpt, uh, to to paint. Sorry. Uh, a nice feature of Blender is the um, is the ability to paint tileable textures. So the first thing I want to do is to remove the view of my UVs like this and I want to press N and I want to go in the tiling option and click X and Y. This is going to repeat my brush stroke. So as you can see when I'm going down or I'm going in this direction, if I'm pressing this, sorry, you can see that it's, it's repeating, it's tiling my brush stroke to the other side and this is cool because this is going to um, help us uh, design tileable texture textures that um, are not breaking on the edges. We can also in the view click the repeat image uh, that is going to show you uh, the texture in infinitely on both axes. So let's right click and select a darker color. Uh, we are going to change the size of the brush by pressing F and in a very, I don't know why it's always going, okay. <laughs> and in a very organic way, we are going to paint striations like this. I'm not using a line tool because I want this to feel organic. This is going to be a fabric kind of texture and we are painting it gray because we are going to tint this texture in a shader. So I can press F again to add more variety to my strokes to darken a bit the some stroke and you can see that I'm free to choose where I want to paint because it's repeat, repeating infinitely. You note, note that usually I will do this kind of stuff in Krita, but here I wanted to do a 100% a Blender tutorial. Doesn't matter if the space is not right. It's approximately okay for a case. And what I want to do is to give it a feel of um, um, of handmade. So I'm going to uh, get a darker color and I'm going to increase the, the strength of some lines darken the corners, s some corners, whoa, sorry. So, 
getting a darker brush. If I zoom out, you can st start to see what I'm looking for. Try not to make obvious repetitions. I know it's hard when painting tileable texture. Textures. So yes, you're looking for something like this. And now I'm going to press N and grab a light, a lighter color and pressing F to change my size. I'm going to lightly, very lightly fill my squares uneven, unevenly. Meaning that I don't want them to be uh, equal and very geometric looking. It's very, it should be very organic. That's what we are looking for. Handmade at least. So I can press S to pick a color that is under my cursor and then I can go back and refine a bit some parts. Doesn't matter what we are doing in the details. It matters though that we are doing it properly as a whole texture. So you can see that it looks kind of a fabric uh, kind of a uh, kind kind of uh, it looks like a, a fabric. So this texture, I can remove the repeat image. I can save it by pressing Image Save As or Shift Alt S, and I can uh, save this texture. Okay, so it's saved on my side, and I will apply it to my character. So to do this, what I'm going to do is um, go back in object mode for this and I'm going to enter in the shading workspace selecting my character and here in the shader that we are going to rename body we are going to shift a add a texture that is going to be an image and fabric and if we put this to our character you can see that it's really not fitting well so we will have we will add um, an input Texture coordinate to fill in the UVs, even if it's already the case by default. But we are going to also add in the vector a mapping node. On top of this line, it's going to connect automatically. And if we if we select the first slider in the scale and go down, uh, we can change the the repetition of the of the UVs. And you can see that we can find a, a better a better looking uh, tiling for our floor sack. But now what I want to do is to remove the roughness. It was too uh, too shiny, we don't want this. I can also uh, lower down the specular aspect of it. And I want to, after the fabric texture, I want to box select this, pressing B, move it using the G key. And I want to add by pressing Shift A, um, a, a tic -tic -tic in the mm -hmm, converter, I think, color ramp. I want to convert my grayscale image to uh, to different colors. So as you can see here, the darks, the darker, the darkest color of my image are going to be. Uh, corresponding to this slider and the light, lightest color are going to corresponding to are going to correspond to this uh, color. So if I'm changing, for instance, this to a blue uh, and this to a red, you can see that uh, basically we can uh, we can um, color the different uh, the lines plus the plus the fabric the inside of the fabric. So we are going to make the lines pretty dark and we are going to choose uh, a color that fits for this the, the whole sack okay 
So it's looking kind of okay. Now what I want to do is to add a bit of bump to this character. I just noticed that if you're using EV, you will have uh, a small issue. It's going to look a, a bit pixelated, but because we are going to uh, put just a bit of bump map, uh, it's going to be fine, I think. So we are going to add a vector node called bump that is going to take our grayscale texture, this one, into the height, and we are going to put this normal into the normal of our principal BSDF. As you can see from the from a very close point of view, it's looking not great at all, but we can uh, remove a bit the strength even more just to make it very subtle. It adds a bit of life to to this uh, to this material, and it will uh, and it will work. Okay, so remember to save. You can when you save, you can press plus uh, in the file uh, in the file uh, view to add a number uh, to your file, and this is good because you're saving different versions of your files. So now we are going to press save as, and we have a new iteration of our project. So now what I want to do is to paint an eye. So I'm going to go in the texture painting view again, creating a new texture. It's going to be close to white, to white, but a bit toward the yellows because an, the, the white part of the eye is never white. Uh, in, in, in fact, the, the white part of the eye is called the sclera, by the way, but it's never white. It's a bit toward the yellow. So I'm going to call it I and I'm going to press OK. So it's easier to do what I'm doing here in Blender to do it in Krita or Photoshop. But just for the sake of doing everything in Blender, again, we're doing we're going to paint our eye here. So what I want to do is to first change the fall off of my brush to this brush. As you can see, when I'm pushing the radius, it's creating dots. Okay. I want to remove the fall off pressure and it's going to create a perfect dot for me without any pressure from my stylus. The fall off is a bit harsh to the end. What I want to do is to add, to put this point to the bottom, add another point and create this very, very steep fall off. As you will see when I'm going to increase the brush, it's going to create a very slight gradient to the border of my of my of my brush. So, first thing that I'm going to do is a very dark, a very dark and round brush like this, and then I'm going to lower down my brush, pick a brown color and try to center it a bit like this. I'm going to pick again a dark for the pupil, trying to center it again. Something like this approximately. And uh, then I'm going to change my brush uh, fall off to something like this. This will give me uh, a normal brush, but I'm going to add back my pressure sensitivity. And by pressing S, I can pick the color under my brush. And now I will change it a bit. So you can see, I can change it and I will try to, to paint the iris like this. So it doesn't matter if I'm going on top of, of the edge right now, I'm going to fix that a bit later, but you can see I'm trying to, to add some variety and to stress and some striation to 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 my eye. That's the idea for now. I can pick a, a darker brush to adding basically randomness to 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 this thing. I can also make a, a a smaller brush size by pressing F, and I can add some vein-like strokes like this. This is just 
a very quick and dirty eye making, but that's going to do the, 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 the trick for us. What we have to do, I can also add some brush stroke on top of the gradient, on top of the black outer edge there. Not that much, but it's just to, to for now make it looking better. And one important thing is to also change the tint of the color so I can add a bit of green here and there. You can see it, it adds some variety in the in the eye. I can add some purple here and there. Okay, and now I will go back to the black. And by hand, I'm going to overlap this and paint the center. I can always go back to the other type of brush with the other fell off in order to, to make it work, but in this case it's going to be okay. Again here, I'm going to pick the color under my brush and make the borders a bit more, a bit less visible. Fade the, the border out. Okay. Adding new veins here and there, maybe more subtle this time, more, more thin. I can select the center of the eye, the color by pressing S, and now I can pick a, a wide brush. I can change the opacity by pressing Shift F and I will darken the top part of my eye like this. And I will then select a white or a bright color, adding some brightness here and there, but not in the dark part, not in the dark section. And you can see it, it resembles an eye. It's not perfect, but it resembles an eye. So now I'm going to press Shift Alt S to save this texture, calling it eye. And uh, we are going to map it to our eye. So in order to map it to our eye, what I want to do is to first unwrap the eye. So I'm going to select the eye and press shift uh, and press um, slash in order to isolate only the eye section. I'm going to select this edge, press control E to mark the seam. And if I'm going back in the UV workspace, selecting everything and pressing U unwrap, you will see that it will unwrap the eye. Um, again, pressing slash if I only want to see the, the eyes in this view. Going back in shading here, I'm going to plug the texture of my eye, adding a, a texture node, basically. I'm going to plug it in the color and you can see that the material was called iris before. I'm going to call it eye again. And I'm going to remove in the material section here the sclera. So my eye is only having one material for now. So back in the UV editing, I can press Z in the viewport, material preview to see my texture. And you can see that here I have my UVs. So this one is going to be pure white because it's the back of the eye. And this one is going to be mapped to our eye. So if we bring back our character by pressing slash and go in front, we can try to match. How the eye will look like something like this. Remember to center the loops around this. Um, we have an issue with this is that you can see that the texture here is uh, probably grabbing part of the of the eye. It's because it's repeating the texture is repeating in the shading. So what we can do is here in the um, in the input texture, we can remove this and say we want it to extend. So meaning that it will pick the um, 
if we go back in UV editing there, it will pick uh, the border edge color. So even if we put this island there, it will extend the white part of this texture and uh, pick that for everything that is outside the square. Okay. So now we have an eye. Uh, it's not looking great because we don't have the reflection in the eye. So before doing this, what I want to do is I'm going to select um, the center vertex there and I'm going to press Ctrl B to bevel it. But you, you can see I cannot bevel one vertex. In order to bevel it, you can press the V key. And if I'm pressing V, I'm beveling it. I'm beveling only, um, only a vertex. And I'm going to size it the size of the of the of the iris, and I'm going to finally uh, extrude this part inside once and two times. Okay, so like this, I'm creating the whole of the iris and the inner part in order to make it more uh, work working better in terms of topology. I'm going to extrude and I'm going to right click merge vertices at the center to create only one vertex like this. And because we're using subdivision surface here, it's creating something weird. So we can also add a crease there. Okay. Anyway, I can select this point, press control plus uh, twice uh, or more than twice, just to the edge here. And I will add a new material for this called iris. Iris, and I'm going to assign it. As you can see, it's not going to use my texture anymore, um, but I can I can also add a loop there to just constrain it to the border again. And my iris is going to be completely black, but it's it's not going to receive any light. To create this effect, we are just going in back in the shading tab. We can just remove the shader and anything that has no shader in the output is going to be pure black without um, receiving any any light. Okay, so this is cool, but this is not creating the highlights that we want. I'm going back in the eye here. I'm going to lower down so we can lower down the roughness if we want to, to have something like this, but we are not going to go with this approach. So I'm going to push back the roughness uh, to something like this and removing the specular because we are going to use our own method for creating the specular reflection. So an eye is composed of um, of the iris, the sclera, the white part, the the pupil, and I don't know why I've called this iris. It's called pupil actually. Sorry. So this is the eye iris. Uh, so this is the iris plus the sclera, and what we are going to do is we are going to add another part, and this part is going to be the cornea. So to add the cornea, we are going to go in the top view, maybe go back in solid view. It's going to be easier. We are going to select this part of the eye uh, with X-ray activated. So everything like this. We are going to duplicate it, right click to cancel the motion, the, the displacement. And we're going to rotate this 180 degree by pressing RZ 180. We're going to push this part in front and scale it a bit. And for this, we are, creating, we are going to create a new material and assign it and call it cornea. So we've assigned to this selection the cornea material. Now what we want to do is to select this part, uh, which represents the cornea. And we want to extrude it in the front and scale it a bit. We want, we want basically to create a bump. We can do this once more. And maybe we can select this edge and pressing G twice, we can slide it a bit. But what we are creating is a small bump that will catch the light, uh, the reflection of the light. Uh, the cornea, as you can see, when we are shading is not transparent. And of course, we want it to be transparent. So the first thing that we are going to do is to remove the principal shader. We are going to add a glass shader. But the glass shader is not transparent by default. We need to activate transparency in EV. To do this, we need to go in the um, settings of the material and activate blend mode alpha blend. 
and we need to activate screen, plus, screen space refraction and we also need to go in the EV settings there and in the screen space reflection activate them and the refraction too okay so as you can see now we have um, an effect of a glass material that is working quite cool quite good with our eye maybe it's a bit thick so we can scale it down a bit and pushing it back just a touch like this okay so if we press alt h to bring our character back you can see that we now have an eye that is not perfect of course if it was for for uh, a real production i won't um, get this approach but for something uh, for a quick character like this uh, this is uh, working perfectly okay so Another thing that I want to do is to paint a texture uh, for adding some dust on the character and some ambient occlusion too. So we are going to do that really quickly. Just before I can press the proportional editing and change the shape a bit like this to add more volume to the side. Remember that we are in um, symmetry enabled for doing this. And I'm going to add a new version of my character by pressing plus, save as. Okay, it's working perfectly. So what I want to do now is go back in texture paint mode. And I'm going to enter into material preview. And on top here, I'm going to add a new texture by pressing plus, And I'm going to add simply a base color that I'm going to call AO for ambient occlusion. And I'm going to press OK. If I'm going back in the shading, you can see that my texture uh, should appear there. And the ambient occlusion effect is just something that is going to be darkening some parts that we are going to paint. So I, what I will do is I will multiply this texture with my uh, texture underneath. By pressing Shift A, I can bring a mix RGB node. I can put the AO texture on top of it and I can use the multiply uh, blending mode. Uh, in fact, something important to notice is that when you are multiplying white with any color, it's going to output the color that is just, um, just there. And if you're multiplying uh, uh, black with any color, it's going to return black. So here, what we are going to paint in texture painting uh, is just dark colors. So you can see that it's going to multiply on top, but it looks like the effect is very subtle and it's subtle because in the shading here, the multiply node is half by default. So we can push it to one and you can see that now uh, it's, it's working much better. Okay, so we are going to push it to one and in the texture painting here, we are going to to fill back the texture so I can make the slider go down and up to, to paint. And you can see that by default, my texture wasn't white. So I can fill my texture back to white like this and paint over until it's, everything is white. You can see the effect there. And I'm going to take a bit of, of black here and I'm going to paint around the eyes to create the, um, the shadow for the eyes. And if you want to, you can also uh, re-enable here the UVs and you can see that uh, we, we can also paint on top here the inside. So let's do this for, for this section. Unfortunately here you won't have symmetry. but this is going to, to do the trick for us. And don't hesitate to paint that really, um, really dark because you can lower it down later, of course, and you can tweak it later. But for now we are doing it very broadly and I'm going to paint the corners there and we're going to adjust later on the thing. 
So I'm going to uh, disable the symmetry. Uh, symmetry X mirror, I'm going to remove it. I'm going to add some dust effect here and there. So something like this. If you want to see only the texture, you can go, in, go back into solid mode. You're going to see only the texture that you're painting on. If you press S, you're going to pick the color that is right under your cursor in the texture. In this case, it's going to be white. I can increase the, the strength of my, of my brush. And I can, you see, cut a bit to make nicer dust effects. Of course, you can add, add uh, more, more things to, to this character. Pressing S. I'm going just to do it very quickly, just to show you how it works. Be careful about the seams, not to show them. It's very, very quick and dirty, but it's just to show you the process, okay? It's not meant to be a final, final piece. If you want, you can smudge to the paint like this. Be careful about the performances. It's quite, it's quite uh, consuming. Something like this. If you want to, you can also add some striation. So let's look back in the how it works in the, the material preview. Maybe we can emphasize the seams a bit. We won't add the the, the real seams, but you can do this if you want to using another texture and, a, and another blending mode. But for now, we are just going to do this. It's going to be okay for us. Okay. I, I, I forgot to, to add the symmetry, but you can turn it back if you want to do it in symmetry mode. When usually you paint seams, it's always a good idea. So in this case, I'm going to add back the symmetry. It's always a good idea to, with a lower strength, to paint around a, a, a wider brush, uh, brush stroke. Not that wide, but it's going to give you the indication of depth a bit better like this. Okay. So from the bottom view, the seam will be probably right there. I can paint it like this. And from the top view, the seam is there. I can paint it like this and add some, some, some stroke of ambient occlusion. So you can see, does the trick. Remember to save your texture, pressing Shift Alt S the first time. And um, we are going back to shading, and in the shading we are going to lower down, lower down sorry, this effect, so it's not that um, that much visible. Even though uh, I, I still think it's it's too much, so I'm going to lower down some parts, especially in the eyes here. It's going to be much better like this. Okay, so let's stick with this, okay? So, now that we have um, our character, we can watch it in Eevee. So Eevee is the, the render engine that we will use to, to render our character. You can see how it looks with a simple light. Uh, you can also, in the light here, change it to area. Um, you can change the scale of this area light, rotate it like this. You can change the color to a slight yellowish color. You can also duplicate this light by pressing Shift uh, D. Shift D, and we are going to place it in this side, and maybe make it as a disc this time.
this is just for getting the reflection in the eyes and uh, maybe we can change the color to a very slight bluish color uh, um, a cooler color and this is uh, looking quite okay for the time we have to spend with this okay um, maybe the last thing that we can add is some fluff uh, fluffy hairs on top of this uh, I'm just going to show you how to do that really quickly uh, we can go in the particle system we can click on the plus here we're, we're going to call this uh, hair for now it's going to be a hair particle system we are going to uh, increase the segment amount to something like seven and we are going to lower down the size of the, each uh, strength each hair uh, strand sorry and we are going to lower down the number to something like 20 okay um, now what we want to do is go into the advanced mode we are going to enter in the um, in the physics section and we are going to apply some Brownian motion just a bit to add random randomness to to the strength to the strands sorry and uh, we also will be going to the children section and call uh, and add the interpolated uh, option to add more strength strands and we will go to 20 maybe maybe 20 is okay and uh, in the render amount we are going to to give 22 uh, and we also maybe in the um, I think it's still in the children we are going to go in the roughness and remove and move a bit the the endpoint this is going to add even more randomness to to the to the sh hair shapes and we can also at this point uh, go in the render section we will create a new material called uh, hair or strands So is this the new material? No, this was body. I'm going to create a new material and call it strands here. Yes. And um, for this, if I'm going back to my particle system called hair, uh, in this case, I'm also going to add B-spline in the render, but I'm going to pick the strands particle, uh, the strength strands material, sorry. And what I want to do is also go in the uh, in the in the in the render settings for EV in the air section. We're going to select strip to, to add some thickness to to those uh, those strands, and we also are going to change the air shapes to uh, ha having a lower diameter, something like this going to work well for us and finally I'm going to add the um, in the input of my shader I'm going to add the air info and as you can see the air info uh, there is an intercept method and it's basically creating a gradient from black to white on the on each strand so you know that now you can add a color ramp onto that and just picking the um, dark color for the darkest part and a bright color for the brightest part you can see it uh, it blends perfectly with our character one thing that I would don't want though is to um, is to let the eyes here having hairs so I'm going to select both inner loop not selecting any other vertices only the inner loop I'm going to press ctrl plus many times until there and I'm going to add a vertex group with uh, this selection so I can assign the selection 
you know what I'm going even to select the the inner vertex vertices and not the outside one like this only the mask in fact and I'm going to assign the vertices to this group so all those vertices have a weight of one and I'm going to call this group prevent or protect protect hair let's call it protect hair and um, now in the particle system section in the bottom uh, in field weight not field weight but vertex group in the density section I can select protect hair and you can see that it only gives me hair on this but if I click this arrow it, it's going to do the reverse effect so you can see that now I've added some small hair strands on top of it to make it more uh, realistic okay so I can save and um, now I am I think I'm ready to to start uh, preparing my character for rigging we're actually almost finished I, I just want to tweak a little bit the eyes again uh, the shape of the eyes so using proportional editing I'm going to suppressing so the O key I'm going just to change the corner here and push it a bit inside. I don't want the the eyes to be as wide as they were. Uh, so something like this is going to work. And I'm going to push the inner part of the eye a bit further. And doing something like this. We can maybe also, I don't know if it's okay, but we can add one loop. Um, but in order to add a loop, we will have to, to, to find our symmetry again. But one trick that we can use to do, to do this is just add the loop, but don't move it. Uh, pressing right click to cancel the motion, uh, the displacement. I can do the same thing here and I can cancel the motion. And as you can see now, uh, those loops are um, the perfect mirror, so I can slide this a bit lower like this and it will work on the other side. It added a, a, more, uh, a more dense crease, a more, uh, how can I say that, a more important crease and it will work uh, perfectly with our character, I think. Okay, so Let's go back to uh, our rendering. I think it looks much better, much nicer like this. Uh, maybe push this a bit higher again. Okay, so now it looks much better. So what we'll have to do in order to prepare our character for r the rigging stage is uh, to apply the scale of our character. So one thing also that I've noticed is that the particle system is on top of the subdivision surface. I want uh, to put it before uh, because uh, otherwise it's, it's going to put uh, hair um, on the final geometry after the subdivision surface was applied. But I want uh, to put my hair strand on the actual real polygons. Uh, so that's why I'm doing this. And now, as I said, we are going to apply the scale of our character if it's not being applied. So check that your scale here is 1, 1, 1. If it's not the case, it means that you've scaled your object in object mode. Uh, if you want to apply that, you press Ctrl A and you apply the scale. You can also apply the rotation and the location. So, uh, so our character um, is being normalized in terms of transformation. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the skeleton for this character. Uh, but before I also have to, to split both eyes in uh, two objects. So I'm going to apply the mirror there and I'm going to select uh, this eye. So remember this eye is uh, in two parts. You have the cornea plus the eye inside. So I'm selecting this, pressing P to separate my selection. And now I have another eye. The problem is that the origin, if I'm rotating the eye, is uh, based on the other's eye pivot. So what I'm, what I can do is pressing slash on my numpad. I can isolate 
uh, this eye, I can select the actual eyeball, not the cornea edge loop in the center, and I can press Shift S in order to uh, put my cursor to selected. As you can see, the cursor is now in the center of the eye, and we want, uh, by going back in object mode, to press right click and set the origin to the 3D cursor. So you can see that the, the orange dot representing the origin of the character, of the model, sorry, of the object, is actually centered. And if we rotate now, the eye rotates uh, at the good location. I can press slash uh, on my numpad to go back. So now my character can, can, uh, <laughs> can use his eyes to, to create uh, different expressions, okay? One good thing to note is that in Blender, if you want to reset rotation, trans, uh, translation, and, and scale, you can select the objects that you want to, to reset, and you can press Alt-R. So for instance, with the eyes, I can press Alt-R, uh, and you can see that the initial rotation of my eyes were not correct. So I'm going to undo as much as possible so the eyes are uh, lying uh, in this, are, are looking uh, forward. And you can see that the rotation for those eyes uh, are not zero, zero, zero. So I'm going to put 90 degree here, 90 degree again here, and I'm going to select both my eyes and I'm going to press Control A, apply rotation. Now you can see that the rotation is zero, 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 meaning that the object default rotation, or the object default orientation is this one. So now when I'm rotating the eye and pressing Alt R, it's going back to the default orientation, uh, clearing out uh, the rotation to zero, okay? Of course, I can do the same thing with Control G, Control uh, Alt G, sorry. Alt G is putting back uh, the trans the location to zero, zero, zero. It's clearing the, 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 uh, the transformation. But in this case, I don't want to do this, otherwise the eye won't be in, in the eye socket. Okay, so now my character is ready to be rigged. Uh, I can put my cursor in the center of the, the wall by pressing Shift C and because my character is being mirrored uh, along the X axis, uh, I know that the center of the wall is at the center of my character vertically. So going back in solid mode, I will also select my lights, press M um, in order to move them to a new collection. I can click new collection. I'm going to call this scene. Okay, and you can see that in my outliner, I have a new kind of folder, if you want, that I can activate and deactivate. This is going to be good in our case because we don't want to see the, the lights and the, and the camera for now. Okay, now we're ready to rig this character. Let's add an armature object by pressing Shift A, and we are going to rename this armature object to rig. And then in viewport display in the object properties tab, we're going to check the in front box. This is going to make sure that this armature is always visible on top of everything else. So now we are going to enter in edit mode in order to set up the bone placement for our armature. Uh, edit mode is really the mode in which you're going to lay out the bones if you want. Uh, there is another mode called the pose mode that you can access by pressing tab. Uh, and if you press tab, uh, control tab, sorry, while being in object mode. So if you are in object mode and you press control tab, you go into pose mode. And uh, the modes are also avail available there in, the, in this drop down menu. And in pose mode, uh, you are going to animate the bone and you also are going to set up different constraints, uh, meaning the behavior, uh, the behaviors of the bones. But edit mode while pressing tab, uh, is the mode in which we are going to add different bones. So this default bone, we are going to rename it as the root bone. And in the side view, we are going to press R, X and 90 degree on the numpad in order to align it with the floor. And then we, with, with the G key, we can place it uh, above the, um, on the ground like this. We then are going to add another bone by pressing Shift A. And we are going to place this bone approximately like this. And you can see that a bone in Blender has a tip and has a root. And in between is just the bone, actually. So we can place the root uh, near the pelvis. We can place the tip near 
the bottom of the head. I consider this part to be the head and uh, we are going to extrude another bone for the head like this. What we want to do uh, is a mechanism where the character has a kind of squash and stretch motion. Uh, to do this, we are going to add a constraint in the pose mode and uh, we are going to add a very specific constraint called the stretch to constraint that will help us doing exactly that. But before doing this, I need to unparent this bone uh, and make it free floating around. Because now if I go in pose mode and select this bone, you can see that the head is going along with it because it's connected to it. But we want to disconnect the head and also to unparent the head. So we are going to press Alt P and clear parent. If now I go back in pose mode by pressing tab, you can see that the, um, the bone is uh, not following anymore and the head is free floating, okay? What I want to do in pose mode now is to select the head and then select the bone that is going to receive the constraint. You can see that the bone that is going to receive the constraint is slightly lighter. So I'm selecting the head, pressing shift, selecting the body. And um, you can see that now the active bone is the body. I can press Control shift c to open the constraint tab that uh, are using targets. And in, in our case, the target is the head. And we are going to use the stretch to constraint. So you can see that now the bone uh, of the body is going to be green. And if we go in the constraint menu for the selected bone, uh, the head has no constraint, but the body has one constraint and it's called the stretch to. And as you can see, uh, everything was set up correctly. So if I'm moving this bone, you can see from uh, the in the viewport that the, the, the behavior looks like what we want. We have a squash and stretch motion. So this is pretty cool. If I move the root bone, you can see that nothing is coming with it. So what we are going to do is we're going to parent the head to the root bone by pressing Ctrl P and keep offset. So first select the head, then select the root bone and press Ctrl P, keep offset. You don't, want, you don't want to use the connected option, otherwise it's going to connect literally the bone from root to tip. And that's not what we want. So now if we move the root bone, the head is coming with it. And for now we can also parent the root, the, the, the bone of the body in the same manner and everything is coming with it. So before continuing, let's rename this bone um, body. So let's press F2, sorry. And we're going to call it body. Uh, then we're going to rename the head by calling it head. And now I want to show you a very Blender specific thing. In Blender, you have bones that are called B bones. And B bones are bones that can act as curves, as Bezier curve. Uh, this is something very unusual. You won't see that in a lot of software. Uh, but we have this behavior for kind of free. Um, you will see that the setup is really, really easy. But before setting it, setting this bone, we are going to go in the object here, um, properties, and we are going to display our object as wireframe. You can see that now we see through the bones, it's going to be easier in terms of visibility. And we are going to go in the global settings for our armature there. And we are going to change the type of bones to B bones. So now we can see B bones. It's only going to affect the visibility of the bone in the viewport. It's not going to change anything uh, in regards to the, the behavior and the features of the bone. So don't worry about that. But this is going to show us uh, something that we really want to see and it's the type of um, bones that we are going to look at. It's called bendy bones. If you go in the, the panel, the bone properties panel, you can see that it's the properties for the currently selected bone. And we have here the number of segments for our B bones. And you can see that using this viewport uh, visit type, viewport display type, we can see the different segments. It's not the case with the other types, uh, the other visibility type. And now, as you can see, we have a curve that we can change. And this bone, even if it's still one bone, has a lot of behavior encoded inside it. So we are going to create a small curve like this for this bone, a small reverse spine, if you want. And 
nothing is changing in terms of behavior. You can see that we still have uh, our stretch constraint. But one thing that's really cool with B bone is that you can say that one bone is going to be the handle of the Bezier curve. So because this is a Bezier curve, it acts exactly like if we had if we add a Bezier in Blender. You can see that this is a Bezier with two points, a bottom and a, and a top. And you can also change the way the curve is looking by rotating the handles, scaling them, etc., etc. This is exactly the same behavior for this B bone. So let's go back in pose mode, select everything, and let's press Alt G to cancel the transformation and Alt R to cancel the rotation and everything that was added to this bone. Why I'm doing this in pose mode? You can see that I've lost the curve. So because I, I, I did a small mistake, I, I changed the curve in uh, pose mode. Again, pose mode is the mode where you set up, uh, you animate, sorry, the, the bone or you set up different constraints. You want to, if you want the, the curve to be by default, you need to do it in edit mode. So we are going to do this curve, this, um, slide curve in edit mode and now if i'm pressing alt g alt s alt r in order to reset rotation uh, position and scale you can see it's not doing anything we still have the basic uh, original pose for our bone okay but as i told you this bone has another option we're going to scroll down and we're going to set up the handle we're going to check absolute for the end handle and we're going to select the head and as you can see the head is now following uh, is, is now pointing at the head. And this is really cool. When we are rotating pre by pressing R twice, you can see that in free roll rotation, a rotation mode, you can see that we, we can twist the spine. That's exactly what we want for this, uh, this uh, rig. Now in edit mode, we are going to add another bone at the root of this bone. By pressing Shift S, we can bring the cursor uh, back to the root and we can press then shift a to add a bone right at this location and we are going to change uh, the size of this bone this bone is going to be um, uh, defining the the pelvis if you want of our, our character and it's going to be uh, the um, initial location for uh, our uh, for the root of the body but we can change the visual aspect of B bones by pressing Ctrl Alt S. It's only changing the visual. It's not changing anything else. It's not going to affect the way uh, the bones are going to behave. It's just a visual, uh, a visual head. So Ctrl Alt S. We're going to scale this bone a bit uh, bigger. You can also use those two sliders if you want. So you, if you select them, you can change the the, the size on the Z axis and on the um, and on the x-axis or if you want to change it using shortcuts you can press ctrl alt s and you can press x for instance to only scale the bone on the x-axis okay but again this is only visual this has nothing to do with the behavior so maybe we can make it wider and a bit less thick something like this is, is okay for me okay so now we can um, say in edit mode that this bone instead of being the child of the root it's going to be the child of the pelvis by pressing ctrl p we can do that and we as you can see now in pose mode if we select the, the pelvis and we move it it's working perfectly and we can also say that this uh, this uh, bone is parented to the root bone so we can press ctrl p and uh, parent it with the keep offset option. So now the root is controlling still everything, but the pelvis is uh, is the root of the, the stretch to um, bone. Okay, so now we are going to add uh, bones for the eyes. So I'm going to select my eyes in object mode. I'm going to place my cursor uh, at the location of the eyes the eye, the selected eye, by pressing Shift S, I put the cursor there. Going back into my armature in edit mode, I'm going to to create a new bone. And as you can see in my snapping option, I was back to increment. We were in face mode, but you can press increment here. And when you are in increment, if you activate snapping, you can, uh, as you can see, you can align 
uh, your selection to the to uh, to increments. So in this case, it's going to be useful to to place my cursor, my bone aligned in uh, along the um, y axis. But if you don't want to activate snapping for doing this, you can also press G and press Control in order to temporarily activate the snapping. So this works like this. I'm going to change the size of my eye and I'm going to bring it bring it a bit uh, forward like this. So I'm going to select this eye bone and I'm going to call it i.l and the dot l is really important because Blender will understand that, is the, that it is the left part of the um, skeleton and we will have a ton of features that are not a ton but we will have a lot of features that are going to to help us symmetrize the rig and also mirror different poses if we follow this notation. So you can put dot L or dot and a lower L if you want to also, but you have to stick with the dot L notation to benefit from, so from the mirror features. So this button is going to be parented to the head. By pressing Ctrl P we can do that. And uh, as you can see now, if we move the root bone, everything is following. And now we have a bone that is going to orient the eye. Now we are going to place uh, to set up a very similar uh, stretch to constraint bone for the ears. So let's select the, um, the mesh. Let's grab one loop, for instance, this one. Let's press Shift S cursor to select it to put it in the center of this loop and go back into edit mode for your armature and press shift A to spawn a bone at this location and we are going to place the tip at the tip of the ear like this. Then from the top view you can select the tip of the bone and place it more correctly like this. This bone is going to be called ear.l and we also are going to add another bone that we're going to extrude so just extrude the bone from the tip and we are going to disconnect this bone Alt P clear parent again. This is going to be the controller for the ear, uh, for the stretch two that we are going to apply. And this bone is not aligned with this one, so we want it to be aligned. To do this, we're going to shift select the ear bone, and we're going to press Control Alt A, and this is going to be aligned perfectly. Okay. So now what I want to do is maybe I want to shorten the size of this one. So I'm going to go into the normal transformation orientation. When I'm activating Gizmo, just to show you, you can see that it aligns. We were in global. Uh, you can see that it aligned the axis to the normal of the bone. So if I'm selecting the tip, I can move my uh, tip in the direction of the bone. This is pretty useful. So let's go back in global here. And maybe we can scale a bit the visual of this bone by pressing Control Alt S. OK, so let's set up in pose mode the same type of constraint that we've done for the stretch to. So we select the target, we shift select the, um, the, the bone, control shift C, stretch to. We have a stretch to behavior. We can select both, both of those bones in edit mode. We can shift select the head, we can press control P, keep offset. And now the head is, uh, is the parent of both of those bones. This bone is free floating, but because the stretch to is pointing at it, uh, it looks like they are connected, but it's not the case actually. And for this bone in edit mode, we can increase the number of segments and we can push the curve a bit backward like this on the Y in and out. Okay, and lastly, we are going to set the end handle to the ear.l, but before that, not, not before that, but we are going to rename this as ear ctrl for controller.l. Okay, this is working quite fine, I think. One thing to notice is that this bone, this bone, and this bone are going to be bones that are going to actually deform the mesh, deform the character. Those bones, so this one, this one, the eye and the, and this one are not going to deform the mesh. They're just there to help the animator move to move the character. So we need to uncheck the deform um, checkbox. So Blender won't take them 
uh, into account when deforming the character. So let's do that for those bones. And from now on, from now on, we are going to to do this for the bones that are, that are not meant to deform the character. Okay, so I think that we are quite doing well here. The other thing to do is to also duplicate this setup to the bottom here and we're going to rotate everything. I can scale that and I, I will simply try to match this and you will see that it's not going to match very well but we are going to fix that in a, in a moment. But just before doing that, let's rename this bone as leg.l and this one as leg underscore ctrl ctrl c t r r l sorry dot l and we are good to go so what i want to do is i want to enter into this edit mode of my the edit mode of my mesh i want to select a loop i want to press shift s and for this bone i want to snap the root to the cursor shift s selection to cursor nothing new i'm going to place this root approximately at the right location and for now I'm just going to remove the segments just to see if it's placed correctly. I'm going to select the tip, press shift s cursor to select it. I'm going to select this bone pressing shift s selection to cursor and I'm going to select this bone. Finally I'm going to shift click this bone and pressing ctrl alt a to align the root, the controller to the bone. So now we are back with a, a good setup as you can see. But we have an issue is that this bone, this setup was pointing uh, with the, um, if we go back into the normal view with the Z forward. And in this case, as you can see, it's also the case, but it's slightly uh, not, it's slightly unaligned. So what I want to do is I want to select both bone and press shift N to recalculate what we call the roll. The role of a bone is the, by pressing Ctrl R, you can change it. It's the alignment of the bone. Um, it's the rotation of the bone around its uh, around its main axis. So you can see it orients the bone and it changes the forward direction uh, in blue of the bone. You can also press N and you can see the, the, the role that exists there. So what we are going to do is we are going to change the role of both of, the, of those bones and we're going to press shift N and we're going to align this with the minus Y axis globally. So it follows the global axis, the Y axis. So it points forward basically. So now I can in edit mode, add some cut back and I will just reverse by removing the minus here and the minus here, I will reverse the curve, the curvature of my bone. And I will also parent this bone to the pelvis. And um, I will parent the this to the root. I won't parent this to the pelvis because I want that when I move the pelvis, I want the foot to stay on the ground. Okay, so if I'm placing the foot there, and I'm moving the pelvis forward and backward. I want the, the foot to stay to stay on the ground. Okay. This will act like a kind of a inverse kinematic, if you know what I mean. Okay. So now I think that we are ready to maybe rig the eye. Uh, so we are going to add another bone at the location of the of the tip of the eye by pressing shift s and shift a to add a bone and we are going to scale this bone and we're going to put it forward like this let me go back in global transform orientation mode and what i want to do is this target is going to be called i target dot l and it's not going to deform the mesh so i'm going to scroll back uh, scroll down and remove the deform option and I'm going to say that this bone is going to follow this one. So first select the target, then select the bone that is going to receive the constraint and press Control Shift C. And let's add the damp track uh, constraint. The damp track constraint is basically making a bone look at another, another one. Um, so that's a pretty cool feature. So I think that 
now we're ready to mirror the rig uh, in order to mirror the rig we can press a in edit mode and we can right click and call the symmetry symmetrize option and because we've correctly set up the dot l notation you can see that blender is changing the name of all of the other bones by dot r and everything should be set up and parented correctly and you can see that both eyes are working so yes everything should be fine one other thing that i want to do is to add a, a bone that will control both eyes, both eye targets. To do this, I'm selecting both of them, pressing Shift S and cursor to select it. It's going to put the cursor in the center, uh, in the midpoint of those two bones. And we're going to press Shift A to add another bone. Let's change its scale like this. And let's call it eye target master. Let's remove the deform option. Let's select both eye targets, select finally the master and control p we can keep offsets so now when we move the master it brings with it the two child and i want to do something very um very specific for the eyes i want that when i move the head you can see that the target because it's not parented to anything is not moving with the head this is something that could be useful but it could also be useful to have the target following the head. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a constraint on this head target, in the, on this um, eye target, sorry, on the master. And this is going to be called uh, the child of constraint. And this is like if we had um, a procedural way of parenting something to, to another. So in this case, I want to pick the rig, I want to pick the head. And as you can see, when I'm rotating the head, the constraint will act like if the target was parented to the head. You cannot see the relation lines, the relationship lines like for the other one because it's not, uh, it's not a static link. Uh, it's, um, it's a link that is uh, uh, defined procedurally if you want. And the cool thing is that we have a slider for every constraint that represents the influence. So in this case, 100% is represented by one. And if I put zero, you can see that my head, when I'm turning it, it's like if the target was not parented anymore. So what we will do is we, is we will expose this slider um, to in the viewport with what we call a, a custom property. We don't want the animator to each time come back to the backstage of the rig and to go in the child of constraint and and do and change the influence and animate this influence we want to have a more easy uh, controller somewhere in the ui so what we are going to do is we're going to select this bone and in the bone option there in the bottom we are going to add a custom property properties to it by pressing add and this property as you can see, it's there. We can click on edit and we are going to call it iFold. Okay, and it's now here. What we want is that when we slide this slider, we want this slider to affect the influence of this of the child of constraint. To do this, we are simply going to right click on the slider, copy as a new driver, and we're going to paste on the influence as a new driver and you can see that now it's purple there and when I'm changing the slider here you can see that it reflects um, in the influence of the child of constraint whatever uh, panel is open there it's still working behind the scene and the cool thing is that if I'm putting one here and I'm moving the head you can see that the target is following and if I'm put changing the influence back it's uh, unparenting the target okay so we have, I think, um, now the basic, uh, the, a very, very basic rig uh, that we can try to bind to our mesh. Uh, of course, uh, if you want to push this rig further, you will do things such as isolate the eyes into separated bones uh, so you can still have access to the orientation uh, of each bone on the eye. You will do um, things such as uh, more precise uh, 
Aikider with bones that can foot roll and flatten the back of the leg, etc. etc. But we are not going to go that far because I still want this tutorial to be uh, easy to follow. So this is going to be good enough. But just notice that if you want to push that rig further, um, it's, it could be a good exercise and it will um, help you better understand rigging. And there are tons of small things that you can do to improve the animator's life. But for now, let's stick with that. Let's try to bind uh, this rig to the character. So in order to bind this character to the rig, what we're going to do is use what we call weight painting. There are multiple ways to bind a, a character like this to a rig. For instance, you can use mesh deform, cages, uh, you can use lattices maybe, you can, uh, and you can weight paint. And we are going to, in our case, weight paint. Uh, there are multiple uh, issues with each method. And uh, I think in our case, we will be able to manage weight painting quite well with the shapes that we have. So one thing that I've noticed is that this bone is not called correctly. So let me call it pelvis. It doesn't matter because it's not a bone, a bone that, going, that is going to deform. But anyway, it's always great if you can, uh, if you can uh, define uh, good names. So what we are going to do is select the character shift click select the rig and press ctrl p and with automatic weight now if you select the character you can see that in the vertex groups we have a lot of uh, new groups that are corresponding to the name of the bones and basically it added some weights for each vertex uh, for each vertices uh, that are uh, going to follow some of the bones so some of the bones. So for instance, if we select this character, enter in edit mode, automatically Blender has said to some vertex to follow a bone in particular. So, sorry, if I'm selecting the armature in pose mode and rotating the, my character, you can see that it already started to move and look, um, and look uh, deformable. The issue we have is that for now, if we look at the modifier stack, we have a new modifier called the armature. And this armature modifier is trying to deform the mesh after the subdivision surface happened. I don't want this. I want to move it uh, below everything. And we also are going to check the preserve volume option in order to make it work uh, a bit better. And you can see that the deformations already looks uh, much nicer like this. We have a lot of work to a lot of work to do though, but uh, this is going to be fine. So now what I want to do is to check what uh, Blender has done for me for the legs. You can see it's quite bad. We are going to fix that. Same thing for the ears. You can see that it's quite bad too. But we again are going to fix that. One thing that I want to do is to open a new window by dragging the corner like this. And here I want to be in material preview and I want to remove the overlay. So it will, it will show me only my character. This is, going, this is going to be a good helper for me to, to see how my character deforms in the final stage. Of course, we don't have the, the subdivision surface activated in the viewport. So expand you, you accept, uh, expect a better looking result when we will have, when we'll add it back later on. But uh, for now, I prefer to work with the actual geometry. Okay, one thing that we can add also on top is maybe the wireframe. Uh, so in this panel, you can add the wireframe uh, and this is going to be okay like this. So I want the, the eyes also to follow uh, the eye bone. So in order to do this, I'm going to select the eye, shift click the armature, uh, press control tab to enter in pose mode and select the bone that is going to be the parent of this object. And then I'm going to press control P and bone. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing for the other uh, bone. So select the eye, select the bone in pose mode, press control P bone. And if you move the target, now the eyes are looking around and following the object as you can see. Okay, so this is uh, one thing done. Uh, the thing that I don't like is when it's stretching um, a lot. 
you can see that the eyes are going out of their socket. So we will paint the influence of some vertices around the eyes to always follow the head and uh, not being deformed by the stretch. So in order to do this, let's stay in this pose because it's a very extreme pose and let's select the armature first, then shift click, the, then go back in object mode and shift click the mesh and press control tab in order to go into weight paint mode. The weight paint mode is the mode where you can paint the influence of, of the bones um, on the mesh that you are currently weight painting. You have different brush that will uh, help you paint the weights and we have different settings that before continuing we need to be sure that are checked uh, to ease the process. The first thing is in the options here you want to check the auto normalize option. Okay, then in the um, if you press M in the tool settings, you want to activate uh, vertex groups X symmetry, meaning that when you are going to paint uh, the influence on one bone on one side, it's going to be replicated to the other side. As you can see, Blender in this panel has created for us other groups, and if we switch between them you can see that uh, it represents the uh, influence of the bone. Red meaning maximum influence, blue meaning zero influence or less influence. And actually you can see that I have a black uh, representation and this is because I've checked the option active for the zero weight and this is showing me where there is no weight at all, no influence at all. So you have all your groups there but there is a nicer way to edit the groups is to select the bones by pressing control. So if you press control, you can see that you can select the bones. When it's purple, it means that this bone is not deforming. Okay. So in the case of the head, we are going to um, paint using the add around the eyes to make sure that the eyes are always following the character. At least the head, sorry. So you paint the head area, you can paint it like this. Let's paint a, a bit more in red and for now it's going to be okay like this. Okay, We don't want anything else to, 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 move, uh, to move with something else. We only want the head. So if you want, you can also disable temporarily one eye. It's going, this is going to be useful in order to see the weights inside. So again, here we want to paint the inner eye so we are sure that the head will be stuck with the head bone. Okay. Again, rigging, weight painting, it's a very iterative process so you're going to, uh, uh, to um, iterate over the different weights that you're creating. Okay. So. One thing to note is that we've checked the auto-normalized option in the options here. This is ensuring us that we have um, our vertex are uh, at the maximum of 100% influence. If you don't do this, Blender will go over 100% and create weird behaviors. So for instance, uh, this vertex here is shared between the head and probably the body, but at the end, it has a 100% influence, meaning that it is uh, equally, probably equally um, balanced between those two bones, okay? Maybe a bit of this one, but we are going to fix that, okay? So here, it's the influence of the head, and we want to use the blur brush then. So maybe I can add a bit of the muzzle and a bit of this part too, like this, to create a, a smoother transition. And now I'm going to use the blur brush in order to blur my lines. And I want, I really want to look at the lines that are uh, forming by my geometry, my topology. And I really want to have something nice. So let's add this one to this, this one to the head too, like this. I don't want the mask to be uh, moving that much. And you know what? I'm also going to twist my character because it's going to be a very, very extreme pose. And I'm going to control click on this 
part and I'm going to blur it also a bit. Let's blur it like this and let's create a, a, a nice transition between everything there. Okay. Always check in this view, it's going to be easier to see. So we still have good deformation in this case, I, I think. I can press Alt R to cancel. Here the character is looking nice. I can maybe add a touch around the crease there. From the back, it's not great. So let me stretch the back a bit with the blur. Here it's okay. And around the ears, it's probably bad. So I'm going to for sure blur this. And I'm going to try to stretch the controller of the here. So let me reset everything. Let me go in the very bad and complex and extreme pose. And let me check what everything is doing. So in this case, this vertex that is poking through, I'm going to add it back to the head. And now I'm going to try to stretch the ear backward like this very, very hard. You can see that I can, for this bone that is deforming, I can blur a bit. The, the thing, maybe it's too much. So one thing to note is that if you have the other part, you can also blur it. And because we checked this symmetry with vertex group, it's going to work. Maybe here I can remove it. So if you cannot with blur work with it, you can subtract or subtract here or here. Maybe it's being added to another bone. Maybe it's there. Yes, it was added to the to the spine. So I'm, re I'm removing a bit of the, the weight from the spine to the top there. It shouldn't be there anyway. Okay, make sure that everything is working fine. So here I can come back and I can maybe remove a bit the influence of the ear around there because the ear shouldn't, oh, sorry, shouldn't stretch that too much. Maybe I can blur from the ear. I can blur a bit like this. Okay, so I guess this is going to work well for us. Let me check when the character is down a bit. So we still have the head motion. We still have the ear that is working much nicer. You can see that now we, we don't have a, a huge deformation around it like it was the case before. Oh, we still have some vertices behind that are moving. We don't want this. So you weight paint them and you, you are going to remove them by using the, the subtract brush. Let's select the body right now. And now we are going to do the same process for the leg. So when I stretch the leg, you can see that a lot of things are coming with it. We don't want this. So I'm going to remove a lot of this. And I'm going to push that leg forward and stretch it. I'm going to again select this leg and maybe here I can blur. Around it, not too much. I'm going to blur also the body, but maybe the body here should be much more overlap overlapping around the leg. So let me add a bit more mass there. like this. Again, we are pushing the character in very extreme poses, which is the best way to set up this kind of cartoony character, I think. Okay, so here it's pushing back the joint inside. 
and here it's pushing back in front. So it's not perfect, but I think it's going to be all right for now. Maybe we'll add, we will have to add some deformation bones later on. We'll see, we'll check. One thing for sure that I've noticed that is bad is when I'm stretching, uh, the bottom here is stretching too much. Uh, so probably in this case, I will, I will add some bones that are going to, to constrain that. I don't know if maybe I can add weight to the, to the pelvis. Um, I'm going to try to remove the um, in the bone options I'm going to try to remove the restriction for the pelvis to deform and I'm going to try to to weight paint the, the, the pelvis so to do that I remove the pelvis I, I, I sorry I check the deform option in the pelvis I shift click the mesh I go back to weight paint you see it's violet uh, it's magenta and I can add geometry and it will automatically create a group called pelvis for us Maybe this is going to help us maintain the geometry a bit better so I can add uh, add some weight to the bottom there. Maybe a bit more, in fact. Let's add more. Like this. Let's also add a bit of geometry for the back. Maybe it's going to help us with the, the legs. And let's blur that. Let's blur also the the spine, come back to the pelvis, the leg, maybe blur a bit the leg. I have a vertex here that is very well defined, very well stretched, sorry. So I'm going to blur this here as much as possible. Let's add back this one. Let's push this one a bit. This one you see, I'm, when I'm pushing it, it's going too far. So what I can do is I can lower my intensity by pressing Shift F. It's going to add less weight. Maybe something like this. Okay, we'll have to check if when I'm coming down, it's maintaining the geometry a bit better. So yes, of course, I cannot go further uh, than this because you can see that it's stretching too much there maybe I can add a bit of geometry uh, a bit of weight from the pelvis to maintain the, the butt area like this not too much but just a touch it's, look, it's starting to look a bit weird but anyway it's maybe doing the work maybe on the hips too let's blur that Let's check. So again, you can twist. The twist looks still okay. We can stretch, looks still okay. We can squash, looks kind of okay. It was looking better with a bit more weight down here. So let me add a bit more weight to the pelvis. Create a nicer curve like this. I can add a bit more weight to this, to this here, maybe to the spine this time. The leg is still going fine. As you can see now, I have a restrict restricted motion and this is good because it looks like everything is working fine, except that we are moving vertices to the opposite side. I don't want this, so I'm going to subtract them. Okay, maybe I need to add this vertex a bit more to the leg. So I'm going to blur it. Maybe I'm going to do the same with the back here a bit. You can see it's, it's deforming a much better like this. Okay, so let's check. I have my body, my pelvis that 
by the way, I can turn around if I want to do a dance. <laughs> uh, when I'm turning it around, it's doing something like this, which is okay. The stretch is still doing fine. Maybe you know what? I'm going to add even more weight to the pelvis. So let's select the pelvis and add some weight in the front by using add. Not too much, just a touch like this that we are going to blur anyway. I'm going to create like a sort of a belt, sort of a under underpant, underwear, sorry. something like this, just to test. Yes, it's, it's keeping the weight a bit better, but it's not here. I'm going to blur, of course, everything, so it's not doing it too much. Creating a nicer transition. I can maybe add more weight to the leg on this part. Let's, let's add to a bit more weight to the spine. So you can see it's just a question of testing, adding a bit, testing how it looks, blurring things. At the end you want to blur as much as possible to create nicer looking transitions. I feel it starts to to come along. I'm going to add more stretch to this location. Again, trying to blur. Let's blur everything like this. Okay. So now, if I'm selecting my mesh, clearing everything. I think I have a better, much better uh, deformation right now. Um, it's stretching, squashing. I can still twist. Uh, the twist in the relaxed pose is still working quite fine. I have the stretch that is looking much nicer, but I can still do better. And in order to do better, a better job, what, I, what I'm going to do is, so first I also need to check, of course, the legs. So the legs are doing fine, except that it's taking here too much weight from there. So I don't want the belly to be impacted as much as that. So maybe this is okay. it's better. Remember, we are animating a floor sack, not uh, a full human. So okay, it's okay, it's quite nice, but you can see that sometimes here it's very harsh in terms of uh, deformation. So what we can do is we can apply on top of that, on top of the armature, a modifier called the Smooth Corrective Modifier. And we're going to put it above the armature. And this is going to help us round the, um, round the smooth the deformation, basically. And you can see that it works a bit nicer. But sometimes you lose volume uh, when you do that, so be careful not to use it too much. Okay. And one thing that I want to do is I want to protect my eyes uh, from this modifier because sometimes, as I said, it, we, we are losing volumes, so I don't want to lose volumes for my eyes, so I'm going to select my eyes. So deselect everything, just select the loop of the around the eyes for both eyes, deselect anything else. Control plus multiple time. And I'm going to create, uh, with this selection, I'm going to create a new vertex group that I'm going to call Protect Smooth. Let's move it on top. And I'm going to assign with a 100% weight to this. If you're looking in the, in the viewport, if you select this Protect Smooth, you can see that 
you have a, you have something like this. You can blur a bit the results around your eyes like this. And this mask, we are going to fit it in the corrective smooth here, protect smooth. But we want the reverse, meaning that we want to affect everything that is not in this mask. Okay, so it should now apply, but not for the eyes. So if we select our character and we remove that, you can see the difference. The, the smooth is being applied on and off. We can even move the factory to one. You can see it gives even more smoothness, but again, we are losing volume a lot. So you can also reap it as much as you want. Uh, be careful with that because it's very consuming. Um, it's not very effective in terms of uh, performances, but in this case, um, because the character is simple and because we are not that much concerned with performances, I guess I can use uh, maybe six repetition with a factor of one, okay? In other software, it's called Delta Mesh, uh, this, this operator, and, uh, and it is uh, very, very well known. So you can see also here when I'm moving this, it's not a good sign that the body is moving. So, um, and let me check if I have other issues like this. No, it's, it should be okay. So what I want, want to do is select my mesh, select my, um, select my ear and remove the paint here. I don't know why it was doing this. Okay, let's go back to the ear. It's not deforming anything else. Here it's okay. The pelvis is doing fine. The cool thing now is that uh, because we added a bit of weight, we can uh, turn the pelvis around and it moves. We can <laughs> do the Mr. Bean, uh, <laughs> the Mr. Bean pose. Um, and I think we are good to go with this character. Uh, now we'll add some facial expression uh, using shape keys. Okay, so this will be uh, the next stage is to, to create blinks for the eyes. So let's do that right now. So in order to add the shape keys for the eyes, we're going to uh, isol er, isolate our character mesh like this, but we are going to select everything but only one eye. So it's going to be easier for us to create the shape keys. What I want to do is I want to protect myself from touching other, uh, other vertices. So I'm going to select the inner uh, part of my eye and I'm going to press Ctrl plus, Ctrl plus multiple times like this. And I'm going to press Shift H. I don't want to, to touch any other vertex for my shape key. So here in the shape key panel in object mode, we are going to add a base key that is going to represent the state by default. And then we are going to add another key and this key is going to be top eyelid.r because it's going to be the right eyelid that we're going to move down. So we are going now to use the connected proportional editing, pressing Alt O and we are going to put the value of the shape keys to one. So before doing that, make sure you're in edit mode and that the, the value is, to, is one there. And we are going slightly, but surely to lower the top eyelid. So one important thing to notice is that the corners shouldn't move that much, only the top part of the eyelid should go down like this. So this is going to be a very tedious process, but if done correctly, this is going to work pretty well. Make sure you're not going too far from the original pose, otherwise it would look weird when you Animate it. And sometimes it's also good to remove the proportional editing and to make sure that the lines are spreading correctly like this. 
Okay, so this is one probably shape key. You can see that the eyes is going down. We can maybe uh, go inside now. Make sure the geometry inside is working properly too, keeping the thickness of the eyelid correct. One thing that is really cool that is in Blender, you can press Shift B and drag a box and it's going to center your view around the, the, the zone that you've uh, selected. This is sometimes really useful to, to tweak, to go in very tiny sections. So this is the top eyelid that I can move down. Make sure that the inside is matching a bit with the rest. So important that when you close the eye, it's the the top eyelid that is coming down and the bottom eyelid is not moving that much. Okay. So something like this is okay. I think that I've moved too much the inside corner, so I'm going to compensate for it by moving it up a bit. or maybe just the other side, in fact, the corner there, moving it down just a bit. Yes, it's much better like this for me. And I'm going to make the other eyes, the other eye reappear by pressing, um, by pressing Alt H. And you can see that we will have an issue. Uh, the eye, because it's round and the shape key is going straight to the point to the final uh, position it's very it's linear linear sorry we'll have an issue and uh, we'll have to add a courage a correction shape key that will um, correct the roundness of the eye so we, we are going to call that top eyelid correct dot r and this shape when the when the top eyelid is at 0 0.5 so in semi close we want this at one to be pushed forward. Okay, so we are going to compensate for that. And we are going to create a mechanism that will automatically blend those shape keys for us with only one slider. something like this. So we're just compensating for the roundness. So when the, so this is the correction, you can see that it's just pushing a bit forward the eyelid. And when this is at one, the, the correction will be at zero. Um, so the top eyelid here still should be at the end a bit bulgier. So I'm going to do that very carefully following the shape of the eye. Okay, making sure everything is correct right there. So you can see that it's going down, but in the middle, this will push a bit forward to compensate for the lack of volume in the rotation. So we're going to use that a bit later, but now what I want to do is I want to do the lower the lower eyelid. So bot eyelid.r. I'm going to put the value to one. I'm going to select the bottom lead and push it a bit up, with just a touch.
push it a bit forward. This is not going to be very, very uh, pronounced because usually you cannot do that a lot. If you try, even with your own eyes, you won't have the ability to 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 push the the the, the eyelid that far. So it's it's okay. You can see it's just a tiny motion. If if we need it. Okay. So now what I want to do is to of course mirror those shapes. So in order to mirror shapes uh, in Blender, what you can do is you can uh, select the state where you want to mirror. So we are going to mirror the this one. So we are creating a shape that corresponds to this one. In order to do this, we can go in the in the arrow there and cl click on new shape from mix. So it's going to create exactly the same shape key. So if I'm removing this one and I'm moving this one, you can see that I've basically copied my shape key. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here, mirror shape key. And you can see that now it's on the other side. Okay, so reactivate this one. Let's do the same process with the correction. I'm going to push it to one. I'm going to click new shape from mix. Top I lead correct dot L. If I deactivate the right, you can see that it's still the same shape key. And now mirror shape key. Boom, it's on the other side. Let's do that with the bottom eyelid. Remember to put everything to zero when you're duplic when you're creating a new shape from mix. So the bottom eyelid is 100%. New shape from mix. But I did dot L. Uh, and mirror this shape key. Mirror. Okay. So now we have all the shape keys that we need. Just going to put zero here. So in order to create uh, an easier control for the animator, we, we are going to add some custom properties to drive those shape keys. So in order to do this, what we will be doing is on the rig, uh, on the head bone in pose mode, we are going to add um, custom properties. So in the bone here, let's add four properties. The first one is going to be top uh, top eyelid.l from 0 to 1, uh, then top eyelid.r from 0 to 1, then bot or bottom eyelid.l from 0 to 1, and here bot eyelid.r from 0 to 1. So you can see that the sliders uh, appear here. I can select them all and press 0 to, to push them uh, back to 0. So now what we want to do is we, for the top eyelid first, we are going to create a new driver and we're going to copy um, as new driver. And in the shape keys here for the top eyelid, we are going to paste the driver. And now if I'm selecting this bone, the head bone, and moving this control, you can see that the eye is going to close. But the issue is that it's not moving also the correction that we want when it's 0 0.5. So remember that when it's 0 0.5 here, I want the correction to add some bulge uh, on the shape key. So I want to activate the correct shape keys, the correction shape keys to one. So in order to do this, I will also, so I will let it at 0 0.5 here, and I will also in the shape keys, select the correct, correct here eyelid, and I will paste the driver in the same way. The problem is that now the, um, the slider is just a one-to-one -one mapping, meaning that it's 0 0.5 in the correction shape keys. But when it's 0 0.5 here, we want the shape keys to be one in the, uh, in the correction slider. So we will have to find a way to map this value to one when it is 0 0.5 and back to zero when uh, this is one, okay? So you can see that now the bulge is not working really well. So in order, in order to do this, what I will do is I will open the driver editor 
in the um, in, a, in this window so we are going to open the driver editor there and I'm going to select uh, my mesh and you can see that here we have our two uh, shape keys or two drivers sorry so for the cur I'm going to hide the first one which is the top eyelid and this curve is representing the curve um, for the correction and you can see that for now our value is at 0 0.5 what I want to do is at the end here for this key so I'm going to zoom out sorry for this key um, I want it to be at zero so I'm going to put the value at zero okay uh, not if not the value it's at frame one uh, the value is zero here sorry and now I will select the handles of my values and you can see that it starts changing the value imagine that here we are at 0 0.5 this is the value of the slider 0 0.5 and when it's 0 0.5 we want the, the, the curve here to touch 1 okay so what we can do is we can make this tangent a bit longer like this and we can make it touch the one value and you can see the slider here is changing and when it's reaching one it means that it's okay okay so now the cool thing is that uh, when this line behind is playing this one is creating this motion okay so it's it's basically activating to one the the value when it's 0 0.5 and deactivating the correction shape when it's moving to the other side so if we look at the shape key for this one if i'm moving the eyelid you can see it's working pretty well with the bold in action okay we're just going to copy that so in order to do that we are going to uh, recreate exactly the same thing uh, what we can do to save some time is to go in the uh, drivers that are already set up there we can copy this driver the first one for the top lead dot L we can apply it to the to the top lead dot R by pasting the driver we can do the same thing with the corrective shape and paste so now of course when we select this and we move the, the right nothing happens but if I move the, the top lead both shape keys are working we just have to change the name in the driver so here uh, for the top lead dot r in the uh, driver section you can see this is the path to the slider we can just change the dot r here and same thing for here the dot r is the name of the the slider so now if we go there on the head we have the other one working and this one working with the same uh, idea okay Last thing we'll have to do is to uh, select uh, the bot eyelid uh, to, to do a, the, a, a, the same behavior for the bot eyelid and this is going to be really easy because we have only one shape key so we're going to copy as a new driver for the bot eyelid dot left select the mesh bot eyelid dot left paste the driver and let's do the same for the last one uh, but I did R and copy as new driver and paste it in the final um, situation in the final shape keys. Let's move here to a 3D viewport again, and now we should be able to animate really simply uh, the eyes. So you can close the eye like this with the top and the bot eyelid dot R. You can, as you see, move it a bit higher, and you have. Um, you have a, a blink you can uh, really easily create different shapes like this and of course you can animate those sliders and this will uh, be um, good enough for what we have to do sometimes animators like to also have um, controllers on the head uh, I think that the the last thing we have on the facial features on the on the face the better it is for animating uh, 
uh, if you look at rigs from Pixar Animation Studio, you can see that they have controllers that are following the skin of the characters. Uh, this is too advanced for this tutorial. Maybe I will cover that kind of things for another tutorial, but but uh, I think it's better if we separate the facial features from the mesh. We want to see always the mesh. And talking about that, I'm going to, in order to finalize the, the mesh, basically here I'm going to zero out everything. In order to finalize the, the, the rig, what I want, want to do is I want to add um, some colors and I want to, to, to hide the bones that I will never touch. So those bones here and the eyes, I will never touch them. So I'm going to press M and move it to a, a different bone layer. Layers for the bones are there, as you can see, and they are uh, completely, uh, completely uh, available to you. If you want both of them, you press Shift and you access to both of them. But this is the only one that we are going to manipulate. Okay. One other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add colors for my uh, layers, for my bones. So I'm going to create bone groups, three bone groups. The first one is going to be called center or default, sorry. Then we have left and then we have right. So the default group here is going to be by default blue. The left is going to be red and the right is going to be green. And what I want to do is I want to select everything that is going to be on the left I'm going to assign it to the left. Everything going to be on the right, I'm going to assign it to the right and everything else. So to the center, I'm going to assign the default group. And now I have shapes that are colored. And the last thing that we can do is we can add some custom shapes for our uh, visuals. So we can replace the visual of the bones. So we are going to create um, two custom shapes mainly, one circle, and one, uh, and one circle, in fact, only one for now. So let's add a circle uh, like this, and we are going to connect the two center uh, like this by pressing F, creating a line like this. This is going to help us orient the shape. And this shape, I'm going to press M and move it in a new collection called Shapes. Okay, so it's now separated. And this circle is going to be called, uh, usually we call WGT for widget circle. And what I can do with this, uh, this shape is I can select, for instance, my head and I can go in the option for the bone and in the viewport display, I can say, I want a custom object and I want a circle. You can see that it is not aligned perfectly uh, in the right orientation. So what I can do is I can uh, rotate my shape in edit mode, 90 degree, like this. And now it's going to be aligned uh, in a better way. And I can use this controller instead of the block. Same thing for this one. I'm going to use the custom shape uh, widget, with widget, but you can see it's very little, very small, sorry, so I can scale it like this. Um, this is going to help us uh, uh, use the pelvis. Usually for the pelvis, I'm not doing a shape like this. I'm more doing like a, a V shape, but for, for our purposes here, it's going to be fine. And um, for the ears, I'm going to I'm going to try to change it for the widget too. Probably it's going to be much nicer. Let's do that for everything. Widget circle. Widget circle. For the root, usually for the root we do another type of shape, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to model a shape that will be uh, symmetrize. So let me symmetrize this mirror on the X and the Z axis. And I'm going to extrude here uh, something like this to represent the direction of the root. 
uh, this is going to be called, this shape is going to be called widget root. I can select this bone. I can go in the viewport display of the bone and put the widget root. And as you can see, it's not aligned in this case. So um, I'm going to rotate it back. I'm going to apply the mirror and I'm going to apply here the rotation and scale. So this is the original orientation. And in this case, I can even scale it a bit more. So it's wider. Okay. So this is the root of my character. Now for the, um, the eyes, uh, let me try to add the widget root again, because I think it's fun. Mm. So yes, I'm going to add the widget root and I'm going to scale it to something like 0 0.2. Same thing for this one, widget, widget root 0 0.2. And for this one, I'm going to add the widget circle. Uh, now I'm going to create another one, another shape again. So I'm going to duplicate this one and uh, I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to select those points and press O for proportional editing. And I'm going to scale uh, this like this, create a sort of mask. I'm going to remove this edge and this is going to be widget uh, I master and I'm going to select this bone again and with in, in pose mode and I'm going to add I master and of course I need to apply the rotation uh, I need to sorry rotate it 90 degree and apply the rotation and this is going to be matched normally I can scale it a bit and also in edit mode, what I can do is I can put the center of this bone in the center of those ones. So I'm going to select those two bones, press cursor to select it, and I'm going to shift this bone to the center by pressing selection to, to cursor. And uh, this is quite weird actually. Uh, so let's do that again. Uh, shift C cursor to select it and I want um, oh and I want this uh, this bone to be hmm. okay so no in fact I'm, I'm going to, to lower down this until it matches oh yes the, the root in fact should be in, at the same location so you know what I'm going to select both of the root, press S Z zero to flat my scale on the same axis and it should uh, align everything. Okay, so now I have a target that is better looking for my shapes. Uh, sometimes it's also, um, it's also a good idea to add thickness to your shapes. So for instance, you can add, um, I think it's called the skin modifier. Um, and you can, uh, you can change the weight by selecting all your vertices inside and pressing Ctrl A. It's going to change the weight. And I don't remember if, yes, it's, it's creating a shape like this. You can see it's sometimes much easier to see. So we're going to do this for all of our shapes. So go back in object mode, select this shape. I'm going to make it a slightly less uh, thick. I'm going to repeat the same process here, add a skin modifier, press Ctrl A to lower down the size here, select this shape and press Ctrl A, uh, and press, sorry, uh, a new modifier, add a new modifier called skin, select everything inside and Ctrl A to change the thickness of the shape. And now when we select the rig, we have uh, this much nicer looking shapes. Okay. Um, it's maybe still too thick. So I'm going to select everything and scale ag again. And this too. I don't like when it's too, too, too much present. 
And the last thing that you can do is also go in the viewport display object and remove the in front option for your rig. So now it should, when you press Alt Z, you should see your rig, but the geometry is not inside. Okay. Maybe this shape is a bit small, so I'm going to scale it here. And maybe this one too, like this. And I think that now we have something quite okay. Um, remember for your widget to remove the render visibility. Uh, you can also remove the viewport visibility uh, because um, everything there will be uh, re replaced in the bone. It's still visible for the bones, but it's not visible as a mesh. So um, now everything should work uh, properly, I think. We have finished the, um, the rig for this character. Uh, at least it's a very, very simple rig. Uh, one thing that I don't like also is to see the relationship lines. To do, to remove them, you can uh, go in the view, I think, and you can go. It's not view, sorry. It's um, in in the object visibility. No, hmm. I don't remember where it, where it is. Item. It's somewhere. Maybe it's in the scene. It's called relationship lines. Uh, oh, now it's in the overlays here. So you can go in the overlays and you can remove a, a relationship lines and you see it removes the parenting lines. And with that, um, we have our rig uh, ready to be animated. I hope this part was uh, not too complex. Uh, I really encourage you to follow it again if you had any trouble. Of course, with more time, we could uh, achieve a much better rig, but for the time we have, I think it's going to be fine. Okay. Before going on, I, I just noticed something in the leg that bothers bothers me. Uh, you see that the, the, the geometry is like merging in this case, and this is probably due to the smooth uh, operator. Uh, so if we go there and we deactivate it, you can see that we have a much much better shape uh, for the leg, but not for the um, not for the rest of the body. So what we'll do is we will add uh, in the protect smooth uh, modifier. We will remove the leg from the smooth uh, operator. So let's uh, remove. Let's um, activate back this operator and let's uh, and let's select the legs so we are going to select um, sen the center loops like this quit press control plus add this and this is going to be added to the protect smooth group as you can see we should now not use the smooth for the leg uh, which is better because we now have better, much better deformations here, and uh, we will do uh, probably the same for the for the ear. Yes. So let's uh, grab, let's select the point for both ears. Control plus multiple time until here, and let's add this to the to the weight to create a a much better shape for the ear. You can see it works much better. Okay. Um, I'm also going to add more in more uh, segments in those bones. So five, six, six is going to be better, I think. It's going to add much more uh, detail to the curve, but be careful not adding too much um, uh, segments to bendy bones, as sometimes they can they can make really bad deformations. Uh, but in this case, it's it's okay. I think maybe we can also add one more in the in the spine. Before animating this character, there is one thing that I want to polish. It's the UVs for the eyes because now when the eyes are closed, uh, the UVs around 
the orbit are quite uh, stretched. So we are going to correct that by just simply going into the eye controllers and we are going to uh, lower every uh, take all the sliders by taking the first one and drag and dragging down and we're going to push everything to the right to close both eyes together so now what I want to do is go in UV editing and you can see that here we have a very stretched UV um, unwrap for the eyes so we are going to select uh, our character we're going to select everything by pressing A in edit mode and now here we are going to select the edges, the edge loops and we're going to try to accommodate for the stretch. Uh, you just need to follow the procedural texture that we've done. So something like this, as you can see, will do a much better job. So I think it's okay for this eye. Let's do exactly the same thing for the other one. It's it's okay if it's not symmetrical for this part. It's not very important. Of course, there are better ways to correct the UVs. You could have just re unwrapped the UVs and correct the texture for the ambient occlusion, but I, I don't want to spend too much time for that. So this is going to be okay for what we are going to do. And this is why usually um, we model the character with the eye closed. Uh, it's for having better deformations for the UVs when the eyes are closed. So next time if you want to model the eyes with uh, a closed shape, uh, you will have to spend much more time doing your shape keys, but it's actually worth it if you want uh, a more, I would say, polished character. But in this, in this case, it's going to be just all right for us. So I'm going to open back the eyes and now we're ready to animate this character. So let's go. So we are going to animate a walk cycle for this character. So let's get started. I'm going to uh, first disable the controllers that I don't want to see. So I'm only going to see those ones. And um, one thing that I want to do in order to ease the process is I also want to take the root and the target for the eyes and move them to a second layer. So I only watch uh, while working the main, the really important bones that are the, the pelvis, the, the head or the chest and the ends and the legs. So from the side, I'm going to start defining the different key poses for my character. Uh, I'm going to enable here auto keyframe to add aut keyframes automatically. And I'm going to go in the first key here and I will be adding uh, my first uh, keyframe. So I'm going to move my character like this and I'm going to create what we call the contact position. So the contact position is going to be uh, really important for us uh, because it will represent the pose where both feet are on the ground. So as you can see, my controllers are slightly tilted. So I'm going to untilt them uh, like, like this. And I'm going to, from the opposite view, rotate this one so it creates a kind of foot shape, even though I know it's ridiculous to say that. But I want something more or less like this. I'm going to put my pelvis like this. And I'm going to push the controllers for the feet a bit more inside in the contact pose. Okay. So this will be the contact position. Um, for the contact position, when both foot, both legs are uh, in a V shape. Usually the pelvis is tilted like this. And we are going to do a double bounce walk cycle, a uh, very joyful uh, walk cycle. So the first pose is going to be a up pose, meaning that uh, the, the legs will be a bit more visible and the character will have a thrust like this upward. And we are also going to um, counter rotate compared to the pelvis. The pelvis is going in this direction and the head, the chest is going to the opposite direction. And this is going to add a bit more, um, a bit more joy if you want in the, in the, in the character. One thing that we can do too is to 
very very slightly uh, turn the chest the pelvis like this but that's it's going to be very gentle for the ears don't worry right now we are going to deal with them later so let's copy this by pressing ctrl c i just realized that i don't have the shortcuts let me add them back and we are going to paste that um in the um, 13th frame in reverse so in order to reverse a pose you can press ctrl shift v and as you can see it reverses the pose which is really useful and at frame 26 we're going to paste that back and now i'm going one frame back using the the right the the, the, the keys the right and left keys uh, and i go i'm going to press ctrl end to end my animation there so now i have a, a, a cycle okay so now i'm going in the middle to add what we call the uh, the down pose um the sorry the the passing position uh and this is going to be still an up uh, position so we are good to go for that and i'm going to uh, let me check i'm going to here approximately to uh, move to cancel the rotation by pressing r alt r sorry and i'm going to place the feet on the ground and this foot is going to be turned a bit more and i'm going to make the pelvis go a bit higher so we see a better shape for our feet and i'm always going to try to make an s shape representing this as a flat shape for the foot and this one is like this okay so maybe i can put the chest up a bit and this should be the passing position so let me copy this passing position to the, to the 19th keyframe in reverse and you can see that we we start to have uh, something that looks like a walk it's not great of course because we need to add the passing position uh, the down position sorry so for the down position i'm going to plant the foot on the ground like this it's okay and i'm going to turn this foot and drag it a bit behind or you know what i'm going to reverse the curve for now and i'm going to lower the pelvis very much like this to create the thrust the bounce in the in the character let me select everything Control c going to this position Control shift v you you notice also that i can label the keyframes so i'm going to take those one the contact position and i'm going to choose this visual so it's it's more visible maybe also the the passing position i can do that and the rest is going to be maybe blue i don't care about the the real name i just want different visuals for my keyframes so you can see that now we start to have uh, something that more or less looks like a walk, but it's maybe time to adjust a bit the visuals. So I'm going here to increase the pelvis a bit. And again, mirror each time I'm, I'm doing something, I need to mirror the corresponding pose on the second foot so this part basically is the first foot planting on the ground and this one is the second okay and this makes a full complete circle a uh, walk cycle sorry okay so now at frame 10 i'm going to add um a, another down pose meaning that the pelvis and the chest are going to go down and i'm going to have here a reverse shape for the foot and this feet is going to be inside of it like this. This, go this is going to create the double bounce effect. So I'm going to select this pose, paste it in mirror, and you can see that we have the, the double bounce effect. So this is a very common walk in cartoon. Um, and we want, of course, to enable to, to polish everything. So. One thing that I will add is in the passing position here, I will put the um, I will put the the um, sorry the, the leg a bit outward like this. So let me select this and copy it in mirror, Control Shift V, and you can see it adds a bit more attitude to the the leg. I can also here 
start the rotation a bit more. This creates a more interesting pose. And for this extended pose, I can also, I will try to tilt a bit more the pelvis like this. It creates just a, a small touch, you know, just a small accent on the, on, on the rest. And in this case, I'm going to also uh, rotate this a bit in the same direction just to, to push the accent even more on the chest. Okay, so I think we are in good, uh, in a good direction. I want to focus a bit more on the foot. So now here and there, I want to make the foot touch the ground. This is the down position. So in both cases, the foot should touch the ground. So let me just find an edge that will work well. In this case, this one is, is okay. So I'm going to copy this pose again back to its mirror pose. Here, going there, we see that the stretch is too much. So maybe I just here in this case, you can see that it, it's very, very stretched. So maybe I can lower a bit the rotation for the curl. So let me copy this, this pose here and this pose right after. We can see a snap, a snapping motion that is quite nice. And I'm going now to only look at the rotation of my gizmo. You can see that here when it rotates, maybe I'm losing too much rotation. So I'm going to copy this pose and removing a bit of rotation when going forward like this. So the funny aspect of this character is that it's standing on, on the feet basically, but, uh, but it's hard for him to, or her, I think it's him or him <laughs> to, to, to walk. Okay, so maybe one thing that I can do to make it a bit more real rea realistic looking in terms of weight is maybe I can push everything down for zero, um, maybe 0 0.01. So let's try oh, GZ 0 0.01 minus, sorry, GZ minus 0 0.02. Uh, this is going to lower down the Y motion on this key. I think it's going to be better, but in order to do that for all the keyframes, I can simply go press, press control tab and go selecting the curves that corresponds to the Y location, I think in, in this case. So if I'm selecting the Y location by pressing my, by selecting my curve here, I can press L to select the, all the key and you can see that it's uh, it's this keyframe. I can see that this is probably uh, the the keyframe for the pelvis. So I can move them both down and you can see it works like a charm like this. Okay. While we are here, maybe we can try to uh, to tweak a bit those curves. So here, maybe I can, in fact, maybe I can uh, select all those keys. And no, I don't know, I think it's, it's okay like this, in fact. Let's try to, no, in fact, the curves are right now are pretty good for me, at least. Okay. So I like when the character is more close to the ground. It looks much more funny to me. Okay. Maybe we can increase, so I'm going to press control tab to go back in my timeline. Maybe I can here um, 
in the case of the, um, the, con the passing position, maybe I can increase and, and higher and, and make the, the pelvis a bit higher. You can see it creates a more a more cartoon cartoony effect. Um, I can also maybe anticipate here the effect a bit by turning that slightly before. Always copying the previous position, remember to do that. And because the character is um, because the character has two bones, maybe I'm going to try to reverse the, the curve there. It looks it looks it looks quite nice, but it's too much, so I'm going to remove a bit of that. And you can see it looks in the final result. It gives him more uh, an attitude that is uh, <laughs> is quite funny. So to animate the ears, what we're going to do is first place them. Um, we are going to make them uh, bounce side to side. So I'm going to rotate them like this. Maybe one being more up than the other, like this. Let's try it like this. I'm going to paste this frame uh, 13 and 26. Okay, it looks like this. You can see that the motion is linear because it, this is not FK bones. Uh, with bendy bones, um, when you are animating from one pose to another, the bones are going straight from one bone to another. Um, not bendy bones, so with the stretch to constraint that we've created. Uh, because the bone is free floating in the air, it's not describing an arc. So what we are going to do is select both ears and push them at frame 6 and 29. So you can see that now it's mm, a bit better. Uh, it's still not the best. What we're going to try here is to counter the curve here, position 4, and frame 4, sorry, and here um, we're going to do the same thing but in reverse. Or maybe to the other position, sorry. Something like this will be more suitable for us. And here, frame 10, we're going to do the same thing but in reverse. And frame 22, like this. So, okay, so you can see a slight hiccup somewhere. For now, I don't know where it is. So let's first move. Uh, this frame to frame 7 instead and I think here this is pushed too far so frame 7 and frame 16 maybe here we're going to lower down frame 19 sorry we're going to lower down everything okay so let's take the first frame and make sure it's the same in the middle. Control Shift V, it's okay. This one, oh, I have a small gap here, so I'm going to select both of them. Control C, Control Shift V. Oh, I just realized that the shortcuts are not there anymore, so let's do that. And maybe frame seven here. Okay, let's well, let's, let's look at this. Okay, this one, this one is the second one, so I'm going to paste it there. It's okay. This one is the up, Control Shift V, and the last one. Uh, it, should, it should be okay. Maybe the the e gap is just in the visual of the bones. If I'm looking at only one bone, it looks quite fine actually. The only thing I'm not really happy with is the that the B bone inside is rotating but only on the top so let me bring back the um, the b bone and let me see if i can in edit mode um if i can change a bit the is in is out so it works better so let's first do that in the here in the in this mode to see if it adds something so maybe we can push a bit the out, I guess. 
So okay, let's bring back that to zero and let's in edit mode push the, the out to 1.2 maybe and 1.2 here and 1.2 here. And let's see if it, it did a better job. Yes, it works much better. We have a much better uh, floppy ear motion. Okay, let's take our controller back. And one thing that I want to do too is now I also want to be sure that from the side and this, the ear are in this position. So I'm going to wide, widen the, this, the gap between them. And in the, in the passing position here, I want to basically with this, those keyframes, I want to create the arc back. So as you can see, the controllers are not the best in, in this case, um, but it's manageable anyway. So in this case, I just want to push this one a bit forward and backward, and I'm going to um, which frame? Which frame was it? Was frames? Let me go back. I don't remember the frame it was. Okay, I think it was. I think it was frame ten. So let's move that a bit back and this a bit forward because it's going to finish the arc. And frame 10 means 22 in the other side. Okay, so now I have a better arc like this. Maybe the curve is snapping too much. As you can see, the, it, it, it breaks here, clack, clack, clack. And I don't want that uh, at that here. You can see, bam, the, the change is pretty much hard. So let, let me decrease this a bit only by changing rotations. So I'm going to replace my keys. And here, same thing, I'm going to remove a bit of the curve frame 10. So 22 is the mirror key. Okay, I feel it's much better like this. So from the top, you can also see that the head is not moving at all. Uh, it looks very static. So we are going to try uh, first, let's save a new copy of this. And we're going to try to now animate the head a bit. So it's going to be very, 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 very subtle. Uh, but when the character will be in this position, maybe we can make it back a bit. So let's try this. Then Okay, maybe it's, it's not that great after all. So it's, it's hard to manage here because the character is not moving forward so we'll have to we'll have to to play with our rig a bit to find a solution to to this not so appealing motion but in fact you know because the character is walking on its place maybe if just as a test uh, i animate over one foot the root motion just to see. I need to put the keyframes as linear by pressing T and linear. Maybe it's, you know, in fact, maybe it's working quite fine in our case. So, okay, I'm going to cancel the root motion um, and maybe, maybe from the top I can tweak a bit here and there in my poses. Let me check from the top. The head is turning, but it's 
not moving. So maybe I can try to push that forward. So on the Z axis, I'm going to push the head a bit forward like this, just as a small test. Push it less on the extremes there. Yeah, it gives something that it could be interesting. Even though it's not very logical. So it's going forward. Then maybe here we need to push it backward a bit on the Y axis. Let's copy this post backward. <laughs> it adds a very, you know, bad guy motion. So uh, it could be interesting. You know what? I'm going to enter in edit in uh, curve mode, curve editor by pressing Control Tab, and I'm going to look for the uh, the axis that is going to be forward. I think if I display the axis, it's the Z axis. So. The Z axis is the axis that goes forward for this bone. So I'm going to hide the quaternion and everything else here. I'm just going to take the Z axis, Z location. And you can see with the motion, it goes forward, backward, forward, backward. So I, I can remove those keys here to make it more, as you can see, to make it more, um, how can I say, logical. <laughs> Uh, with the with the, the curves, maybe you can you know what I, I can also try to by pressing L I can select the curve I can also try to uh, by pressing V choose the free handle type and I'm going to try to exaggerate as um, it's going to be very very intense but it creates a a more snappy head let's scale this here. No, it's not, it's not good in this case. But anyway, I'm going to try different shapes here and there. I'm going to make a more round curve. Maybe like this, it's interesting. Create some more, <laughs> create some more disco pose. And of course, if I want to lower down the effect, I can scale this curve on the Y axis. As you can see, it works. And if I'm moving the curve back and forth, you can see that I can reverse I can I can push everything back and forth, <laughs> making it uh, quite funny. Okay, so I'm going to push it slightly backward, like this. And now I'm going to work on the the same curve, but for the pelvis. So I'm going to hide here all my curves except the Y location that I want to try to animate. So on the first keyframe, I'm going to place it backward just a bit on the uh, 13th keyframe I'm going to do the same but in reverse forward and frame 26 I'm going to copy this keyframe so control C control V so let me select this curve hide everything else by pressing shift H and let me try to remove all this thing. So you can see it creates a, a belly motion. That is quite interesting. Maybe let's add at frame seven another keyframe here. Only on the um, only on this curve. So pressing only on the selected channel. Maybe I can try to create the same thing that we've that we've done um, Previously, like a motion forward. No, it's not. It's not doing great. Maybe we can do a double, a double bounce. <laughs> As you can see, it creates a, a very funny effect, but not quite what I want. Maybe I can just scale a bit this handle to create a more, more smooth effect, and I will of course lower it down. I don't want it to be that that much present. And if I want to select my curve, you can see that I can push forward <laughs> the, the, the pelvis and I can push it backward too if I need to, to create a more scary, scary, scary kind of pose. So let me push it a bit higher like this. And I will also recenter my keys. 
I think like this it, it's going to be fine. Maybe I will try also to rotate the pelvis. No, it's, it's going to be too much. So okay, let's stick with that. Uh, the other thing that we want to animate is um, uh, maybe we want to desynchronize the ears. So I'm going back uh, into um, into my curves. As you can see, it's, it's quite a mess here because um, in terms of, um, maybe I can try to fix that a bit. Let, let me check if I remove those keys. No, I cannot. I cannot do that because I need to compensate for the for the the stretch to constraint. So let's do that for now. Uh, was not ideal in terms of uh, rig, but it was meant to do a lot of other stuff. Usually, in this case, you will have to create what we call a switch F K I K. Uh, but in this case, it will be a switch between this type of bone and an I K version of it. Uh, it will do a much better job. But uh, in our case, uh, I think we're going to be fine with, with what we have now. But anyway, what we will do is we'll desynchronize the ears. So in this case, I know that the frame after uh, the last one will be this one. So I select it and I'm, I'm copying it right after like this. And I'm selecting all my keyframe and I'm desynchronize it by one frame. As you can see, it adds a bit more uh, life to it. I can even do it twice, two keyframes. No, just one was fine in my case. And now one thing that I usually like to add before I need to save, of course, but one thing that I really like to add usually is to, to just work on my main keyframes, but just change a bit, a tiny bit the angles so, so the, the, the walk is not purely symmetrical. So, you know, I'm going to add in some extremes, you know, I change a bit things here and there, just as a slight adjustment, only on one foot step. This creates a, a less, um, a less obvious, I will say, um, a less obvious, uh, um, how, how can I say, a less mechanical walk. So I'm going to grab the, the, this curve back and maybe it's, it's still too much. So, and maybe I can scale it a bit more on this axis. I don't want it to be too much uh, present. So like this, I think it's much better. Okay. And um, again, I, I said I said I wanted to desynchronize both footsteps. So here in the down position, I'm going to increase the down. Uh, so we don't have the same down position. In the extreme here, maybe I can extend the, the leg in this case. Not too much, but just enough. Something like this gives more life to, to the character. Okay, one thing that we can animate too is the eyes. Uh, so uh, we want the target to follow, it's okay. But we are going to select the head and here in the items, we are going to animate the eyelids. So I'm going to go back into the top sheet uh, here, so click on the, the summary icon here. As you can see, the colors are very annoying because of the bone group. So we are going to deactivate the color, deactivate, sorry, the colors by going show group colors here. And what I want to see is those uh, four uh, things. So what I can do is basically I can disable everything else just to stick my head here and I want to create a blink. So to create a blink, I'm going to also remove all the keys that, that were added there. And to create a blink, we are going to select everything here and press zero uh, and, and press I, sorry, on it to add keyframes for that, as you can see. And we 
are going to go a few frames later, push everything down. Okay, so this was not registered for whatever reason. So let's go back there and open the eye back. Uh, this is quite strange. If error evaluating numbers, so zero, 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 zero. And here, one, 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 and one. Okay. So let me let, let me add my keys back. So here I want zero. Quite strange behavior. I'm going to add a keyframe. And here I want one. And I'm going to insert a key. I don't know why it's not working. Um, let's add everything back. Maybe it's a bug. Okay, it was a bug due to that. Uh, this is quite annoying, actually. Uh, maybe it's because the, the bone is it's not activated. Anyway, um, so what we can do is to finish this blink, we can um, select this and make it last one frame and reopen and select those frame and push them back. So you can see it creates a blink like this. So the timing of the blink will define how the character is uh, reacting. So if you have a more um, long blink, as you can see, the character looks more uh, chilled. <laughs> uh, but in our case, we want it to be very excited. So we are going to do a very fast blink like this. Um, and also one thing that is quite nice to do with cartoon characters is to offset the the blink so i'm going to select the r uh, both r channel so this those keyframes plus those keyframes by pressing b and i'm going to offset them by one frame and you can see that it creates it will create a doom doom uh, uh, how can i say that uh, a, laten a la latency i can even push the latency a bit more and you can see that in this case it can work too Maybe I can select everything, put my cursor there and scale. My blink to elongated. Um, I think like this, maybe it's too much. You know what, I'm going to scale it back one, one more. Maybe like this, Look, it looks fine. And um, okay, I'm going to save. And um, now I think to finish that, um, of course, we can spend a lot more time animating this uh, this character. But to finish this uh, tutorial, I want to add a studio lighting and to add different setups and to render a small animation. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to go back in object mode. I'm going to add a plane, a floor plane, and um, this plane. I'm going also to extrude the back like this multiple times to create a studio light, uh, a studio plate. I'm going to add some cuts there. I'm not going into details because you know how to do that if you manage to model the character. And uh, I'm going to press shift click, shade smooth, and I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier. And if I'm looking at the camera right now, I want uh, to rotate this a bit to the side, but here I'm going to go back in the timeline and disable auto key. I don't need auto key anymore. So I'm going to rotate my studio, maybe scaling it a bit. And I'm going to put that in by pressing M in the scene collection. And I'm going to make the scene reappear. Now, when pressing, uh, when sh looking at EV, you can see that it's going back. So I need to, of course, remove my, sh my key because I added a key, a scaling key, I didn't want that, it wasn't a, a mistake, I was in auto key. So I'm just going to to, to put, to set up my, my, my scene. Now what I want to do is to um, maybe sh uh, go close, closer to my character, a bit on the left, 
let's tilt the camera a bit or no let's console the tilt it's not what well it was not uh, great uh, but now what I want to do is I also want to have a better lighting for for this 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 little scene so let me add a material for the ground I'm going to go in the shading tab right now I'm going to go uh, in EV mode I'm going to remove everything that obscures the way and I'm going to select my character and I'm going also to okay I, I don't know why I have, I have a wrap here but I'm going to re-enable re back the subdivision surface selecting my character I want to change to saturate those colors a bit more that's too uh, too sad so let me saturate this and push that towards the the orange a bit more let's make this a bit brighter looks better I think and we are going then to select the ground floor uh, let's call that floor let's look at the material by pressing uh, A to select all my nodes and dot to to focus on them and I'm going to find a color for the floor so we can try changing the roughness to zero for instance um, increase the metallic aspect to create a like a reflective floor this could be interesting um, I'm not really a fan of the lighting that I've done so let me bring back the gizmos here I don't like this harsh shadow so let me go into the view here and let me push this light outside but let's increase the watt values by maybe maybe even more like something like this I really don't want to have a very harsh light here I'm going to rotate this light to the side and push the value even more not that much maybe two, 2000 watts is better and you know what I'm going to lower down the in this case the value for this light I think like this it's better and I'm also going to push the, the back of the studio lighting a bit further so I'm going to press S, X, uh, S, Y and Y again to scale it in local mode and I'm going to scale it on the z-axis again to, to to have the back a bit more scaled and s x and x again to scale it on the local will give me a larger studio okay so one other thing I want to do so later on I will come back on the animation to be sure that nothing is clipping through the floor um, if you press F12 you, you can see the, the the result that you have it's looking quite okay but I'm not very happy with the with the reflection, so let me remove a bit of the reflection on the floor. I don't like this artifact there, and I'm not for now quite sure why they are there, so maybe it's because of the roughness. So let's find a better way. And anyway, we don't have the viewport uh, background, so I'm going to go to a website called HDR I haven't and I'm going to download uh, a free HDR and import it into my scene so I've picked one called Veranda 1k and I'm going to add it I've tried different one but I think Veranda 1k was fine I'm going to add a texture of type environment texture notice that I'm in the world uh, node and I'm going to plug it as you can see it looks like this and uh, of course now the reflection on the ground is too much but what we are going to do is we are going to work on that material but it's giving me a lot of um, um, environment lighting I don't want that so I'm going to uh, lower down the intensity to maybe something like 208 and I want to also change the color of this light to a more purpley, pur purple light not that much but like this I think it's going to be much more interesting 
and let me select the background and let's go back to this color. So maybe, uh, maybe orange will be better. Maybe, uh, in fact, I don't want maybe metallic. Let's remove the specular. Let's put the roughness to 100. Uh, I think it will look better like this. Maybe I can also put a top light, so a light on top of everything that will also light the 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 back the background of the studio. So I can uh, add this light and scale and scale it like this, and I can increase the intensity to ten thousand. Um, this is going to be flattening everything else, but you can see that now. I can push maybe to the uh, to the purple the colors a bit, and this is going to work I think much better. Um, let me come back to my character and maybe I want to push the colors even more toward. I want to saturate the color even the colors even more. Let's try that. So no, it's it's maybe too much, but this is going to be a lot of time for testing things. Maybe I want to have darker lines there. Maybe something like this looks okay. We're going to polish the animation a bit because I'm not very fan of. Uh, a lot of things that I've noticed. I'm going to in the shadows. I'm going to add contact shadows. It's going to improve the the lighting. Maybe on this one too. Contact shadows. Um, I can go in the EV settings and I can also go into the uh, shadows and check high bit depth, increase the cube size quality to one twenty four and the cascade for the shadows to twenty. 48. I can also add ambient occlusion and I can also check the motion blur. The motion blur will be nice because it will add um, a blur effect as you can see on uh, the animation. So if I'm pressing control, so let, let me just change the size here. We are going to render a 50% render. If I'm pressing control F12, it's going to render the animation. You can see that we have motion blur uh, being added uh, to our render and it looks quite uh, interesting and if I press ctrl F F11 I will have the result uh, the resulting animation that uh, that plays in the player of blender of blender so in order to tweak a bit this animation I'm going to try so I'm going to go back in the layout uh, panel and I'm going to push back by going into the curves, the Z location here, the curve Z location, I'm going to push it forward a bit because it, and, and maybe I can scale back on the, the Z axis, the, the motion back and forth. Okay, so no, maybe it was too much. So let's reduce that. But for sure, I prefer something like that. If it's a nicer curve. Now I'm also going to try to push the animation uh, so for the stretch I'm going to try to push the stretch even more just because we can <laughs> and was this key oh sorry uh, I didn't had um, auto key enabled so was this key I'm pushing it and on the other pose this one, I'm pacing it mirror. You can see it creates a much more inter interesting pose. And <laughs> I have an issue with my eyes that we're going to fix later on. Uh, in fact, not later on, you know what? Let's console that. Let's go back with the blink that works fine. Let's go there and let's um, hide everything else for my controls. And here I'm just moving up, control C, control V. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do it by hand. I'm eyeballing it. It's going to be okay. 
Okay, and the, the, the squash part, the down part, I'm going to squash it even more here, frame 4. Uh, the equivalent, I think it's this one. I think it looks a bit more interesting. And the second squash, let's push it down a bit more too. Maybe not that much. And I would like to add more a rotation on the head just to test. So one there and here there. I guess it gives a more interesting shape. And you, you see that at the end I'm uh, finishing my, or my rotation down a bit. Uh, I'm not letting only one key push everything. Uh, so let me look at that full, full frame rate. In order to do that, uh, I just uh, remove EV because it's taking too much time. Okay. So now one thing that I want to do on top of that is I want to be sure that all my foot positions are laid on the ground. So I'm going to hide this and I'm going to go frame by frame and touch the ground. for the poses that should touch the ground or shouldn't <laughs> so here maybe this is squashed a bit more Going to touch the ground here, touch the ground here, touch the ground, and here, touch the ground. Okay, I prefer seeing that, having shadows that react actually correctly to my character. And you know what? I'm not a big fan of the lighting, so I'm going to be more bold with my lighting. So let's save uh, this file. Let's Cancel the auto um, auto key, <laughs> and let's uh, try to be more interested, interesting with the, the lighting. So, I'm going to try to add another light, maybe on top, maybe a sunlight with like five. Maybe this is going to help us. No backward maybe no this is not going to work because we have the, the studio behind so let me try to take this light and make it more angular on the character create a more important angle maybe let's boost it so we can see how it works okay I want basically a light that creates a rim. Or maybe, you know what, I'm going to create a simple fill light with this one. So let's push it to, to 5,000 just to fill the light here. Let's increase until it works. Let's make it a bit to the top so the highlights in the the ear looks fine and now let's add a third light we're going to create a, a simply three-point lighting 
lighting, sorry, to push the back here, the silhouette of the back. And here we're going to uh, put a high number to start with. And this is going to be more tur turquoise. Turquoise, I don't know how to say that in English. But this one is not going to cast any shadows. Or maybe, yes, it does, because it's going to cancel the rest. So I'm going to push that uh, that light really in the back. Change for a square shape. Uh, maybe I need to change the size. If you change the size, you're basically sharpening the, the light. The light result. So as I, as you can see here, as I, as I'm changing it, you can see it's it softened the, the the light. Now if I'm going to for one meter light, I'm trying to push it to describe a perfect silhouette for the back like this. Now I can reduce it. Something like this. Maybe I will use a sun. In fact, let's let's try. No, I cannot use a sun. Sorry, because uh, the, the background is going to obscure the light. So maybe maybe I will have to render the background separate in a separate way. You, if, if we look at this, it's it's much more nice. It's much more nicer, sorry. So what I can do maybe is just take the, take the studio and just for the sake of it, I push by pressing a G and Y push that very far away. Uh, it's taking too much light on the ground, unfortunately, but I think I have the right amount for the character. So if I'm pressing F12, here's the, res the result. I'm, I really don't like to have that much light on the ground, so maybe I can... Um, no, it's not going to do it. Uh, so the roughness is one. Uh, specular is, is going to be too much, of course, so I, I won't add uh, any specular. Maybe by changing it to a simple diffuse and changing the color. No, it's, it's going to be the same. So, so maybe I'm going to, to try to use uh, different lights. So here, I'm going to, to, to change it for spotlight. But anyway, I'm, I'm very sad with the, the transition. So let me rem remove for now the, um, the rim light and let me create another light that I can put closer to the character and change it to turquoise maybe like this it's going to work well enough for what we have to do maybe here i'm going to um, so i'm going to remove the shadows for this one because it's not doing a lot of things as you can see and here i'm going to enable contact shadows by default it, it was the case and i'm going to lower down the the size of the disk to have a, a much better rim light or the back of my character. You can see, I can see the shape, uh, the shapes a bit better. And I'm going to bring back this studio lighting to create a more uh, dramatic scene. So let me check how it works. I feel it's too, uh, too contrasty here. Uh, one thing that you can do is to be sure that in the post-processing in this, in the rendering, no, in the post process, where is it? Make sure to be rendering in filmic, so it's already the case. You can also change maybe the exposure, the exposure a bit if you want to here, but in this case, I'm going to stay with one. Not changing a lot of things, or reset the value. I don't know what what the value was by default. It was zero. Sorry. And we can also try with different uh, rend uh, with different look. I don't want something very contrasty, so maybe I'm I'm going to to increase the the shape of this light. I'm going to lower it down and make it more important, more present 
in the, the, the rendering so to push it a bit toward the a, a, a brighter color maybe the floor in orange is not the best maybe I can stay with a more grayish floor hmm. I don't like that a lot uh, I'm going to shorten the shadow by making the the rim light a bit higher I'm going to turn it a bit also and this light is maybe too much angled so I'm going to re-emphasize re it sorry <laughs> and then maybe I'm going to push a bit more the, the strengths of this one so let's let's render let's do a test render by pressing ctrl f12 with this uh, setup just to see the result and anyway at the end we will add uh, so i can press ctrl F f12 to see the result so you can see it looks quite okay maybe the the animation is a bit fast uh, for the character uh, maybe we can uh, change this so let me check we still have the here we still have the we are in x-ray mode so I want to remove the x-ray mode maybe we can select the animation as a whole and we can scale it to by pressing S to 30 frames. Let me check. To 30 frame and put the, the end to 30. So it's, no, it's bad because it has destroyed all the timing that we had. So either we double it, either we, we stay like this. So I think we, we're going to stay like this. I'm not very happy with the, with the floor. Uh, maybe I, I can go into into shading and I can create uh, I can create a specific uh, a specific texture for it. So I'm going to add a texture of type. Um, let's do a wave texture. Let's look at the result. Uh, something like this maybe will help us. I can add some, not that distortion, but maybe I can, maybe I can try adding some distortion and change, changing the scaling and then adding a color ramp and make this constant. So with a constant shape, you can see that you can have very distinct colors. Um, I'm going to rotate a bit the background. Let's render everything with EV in this viewport. And of course, I'm not going to, to let this work like this. I'm going to remove the detail. Maybe I can add a bit more uh, detail here. And I'm going to try with different colors. So let's go back with the orange one i'm going to select copy and paste the color and now i'm going to add a slight tonal difference something like this let's render everything by pressing ctrl f12 so you can see that the the hair the fuzziness of the air hair is, uh, is looking fine we still have a foot that is going to through the ground we're going to correct that later but now i think with this background it's looking a bit uh, a bit better <coughs> uh, let me add try to add more hairs so in the modifiers here we are going to show the hairs and we are going to go in the display settings for the particles here and we are going to add more let's try with 50 and let's render this control f12 
this is the cool thing with uh, Blender is that now the rendering time with EV is really fast, uh, especially if you have a good graphic card. Control F1 to to see. Uh, yes, with a bit of with a bit more hair, you can see that it looks a bit better. We are going to try to add hair dynamic. Uh, I know it's it costs a lot, but maybe we will manage to to make it work. So you just tick um, hair dynamics, and you will see it will try to add some dynamic to the hair. So we are going to to ena enable that and to render a scene with it. Let's press con Control F1. I don't see it working really well. It's creating the artifacts. I think it was the 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 things that we <laughs> the 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 last thing that we that we added that was too much. Uh, maybe one thing that I can try to do is to select the target for the eyes. And I'm going to, okay, and I'm going to, I don't know why I'm not seeing anything for the keys, but, oh, maybe I don't have any keys for this, but I'm going to change the orientation of the eyes to the side. I think it's going to look quite good. Uh, you can see that the eyes are poking through it, maybe because my shapes are not that well defined in the my shape keys maybe you have to to correct that a bit but let's see how it looks like this one thing that i want to do is maybe going back with the root i want to rotate my character a bit toward the camera and maybe again the the target i can now Rotate it a bit. We're making it, him look up. Yeah, making him look up looks quite fun, I think, and cute. So we are going to do that. I'm going to save. Press Control F12 to render another version of uh, of this animation. And I'm going to press Control F11 to see the result. One other thing that we can add as an effect is some um, bloom. So you can go here and you can add, check the bloom. And for the bloom, you have to find the good amount. So the, the, the knee is going to, basically the intensity uh, is the intensity, of course. But the, then you have to find good values for the threshold, etc. So in our case, we're going to lower the radius a bit. We're going to change the color of the bloom for something very um, turquoise. Uh, maybe it's too intense. And the knee. It's not working that great here, maybe pushing it, pushing the threshold a bit lower like this. Something that you always have to play with. So now one thing that I want to do too is to try to add depth of field. So to do that, we are going to look at the camera settings. Um, one thing that you can do is also change the, the, the focal of the camera. So for instance, making a, a, a less, uh, a more, short focal will will create a more dramatic angle to the character so maybe we can go with the 50, 25 millimeter focal uh, remember that you're in auto key so <laughs> you want to delete your the keys that you've created and i'm going to rotate this camera like this and recenter my character a bit to the right so maybe going back with a uh, 35. I don't want anything to go above my camera and I'm going to to shut my my character from the from below. Turning the camera back again like this. Lower to the ground like this and I'm going to activate depth of field. And for the depth of field I'm going to 
lower the distance and try to get the right focus for my character. I'm going to play with the f-stop. Something like this. I'm going to render the animation. Maybe the hairs could be a bit more uh, um, dark. So that's what we're going to try to do uh, now. So control F1 to see the result. It looks, it looks much better, I think, with, the, with a bit of depth of field. So let's add, uh, let's change the, the material for the, um, for the, for our character here. And it was um, the hair, the strands, color so here we can apparently I've lost a texture I don't know why okay so let's go back to the strands uh, I've just undo so when I'm selecting apparently this material oh it's not apparently it's when I'm selecting the material here uh, I'm changing the, the material, sorry. I'm a bit tired, I think. Um, so let's go down with a darker color and for the, for the root and for the tip, let's do the same thing. Like this. I guess the material is not being rendered correctly. So I'm going to go back in the render and I don't understand why it's not being shown correctly. Oh, of course, I need to, to, to put it in a diffuse shader instead. Okay, now I have what I want and maybe now it's too, too, too dark. So let me push that back like this. Let's try it just one frame by pressing F12. So we have a lot of motion blur and depth of field, so we're not seeing a lot of things. So maybe we can lower down again everything. So let's render everything to see how it looks. Maybe we can increase a bit the size of the hairs, uh, the root and the tip. So we are seeing more of them. So, okay, let's do that by going into the hair shapes, the diameter root, we are going to increase it a bit. Not too much, the tip. <laughs> and we can increase the tip to something like this. And let's remove a bit of the color for the tip of the for the tip of the of the object. Okay, so one thing that I'm probably not doing that right here is if I'm looking at the the a picture in black and white. So I don't know. I don't. I think I can do that here. Um, for instance, with the red, you can see that the character is not detached from the background a lot. Uh, at least for the reds, for the green, it's a bit better for the blue too. What I can do anyway is I can still try to change the color of the floor a bit. Let's push them down to, to create a more... a more interesting setup. And you know what? I don't like the fact that we have twice the same color, the mon monochromatic color. So maybe let's try something more fancy and uh, more, more fun, fancy, <laughs> something like this. <laughs> it's, it's really, really bizarre, but maybe it's looking a bit better, I think. So I'm rendering with control F12. I'm then going to press control F11 to see the result. So 
So let me check frame by frame. Oh, I still have the foot going through the ground and here too. So let me go back to my animation, pressing Ctrl S. Let me check that effectively here. It's the case and I think it's because also the ground is very close to us. So I'm going to add another loop cut um, here. I'm going to push the ground flat and to make sure that all this part here is flat on the z-axis. So I'm can, I can press S, Z and 0 to be sure that it's the case. So you can see that it should be resolved a bit more right now. And anyway, we are going to still go through each keyframe. I can remove this. And you can see that from this one to this one, it's not going through the ground. So I can push it manually on the Z axis. Oh, I've not pressed auto key, sorry. So let's do that with auto key. So probably with the same issue with the other other foods. Here. here it's okay, maybe here it's not on the ground, let's make it touch the ground. I think it looks much nicer like this. It's very subtle, but anyway, if it's working, let's re-render everything. And I, I'm going to add one more thing in the shading of the, the of the character. Right now, the the the, the character is looking very uniform uh, in terms of uh, color. So I want to just simply add in the UV in the shading tab. Sorry, I want to add um, to to create. A small color variation on top of that. So I'm going to use a texture called Musgrave, uh, or maybe not Musgrave. Musgrave, or hmm. yes, maybe Musgrave is going to be fine. And uh, I want. Hmm, let me check if there is one other. Maybe noise. Noise. Noise is going to be better because I I will have. Um, I will have color output, so let's clear that and let's go in the real material, which is the body. Uh, okay, I, don't, I cannot paste it, so let's go back to the noise, noise here. And um, before multiplying the AO, here I want to add a mix RGB node, but on top of the color. And I want to mix with the color of the noise texture. You can see that it adds a bit of textures on top. And here I can uh, push it to the maximum to see the result. And I want the um, I want the, to change the hue of my character. And now when I'm going back with the rest, you can see it adds a touch of realism or a touch of, a touch of color changing. Maybe I can do it in overlay to see the result a bit better. I can add more variation and you can also change the scale of the noise and how much details you have and the roughness. So I'm going to, so you can see, we can see a bit of bending, band, banding, sorry. So I'm going to maybe lower down again the effect 
but anyway it's looking quite interesting like this so let's lower down a bit the factor and going back uh, in into my camera if I can let's uncheck auto key to be sure that we are not doing anything bad uh, the depth of field is maybe too much so I will lower I will lower the f stop but I will push back the depth to something like seven like this let me render only one frame it's going to look much better I think so one thing that I will try to add on top of that by going to the curves is I'm going to add one key for um, my camera location and I'm going to try on the Z on the X location here uh, which is this this key by pressing N I can go into modifiers and I can add a noise modifier this is going to add some noise to my camera I'm going to press control and middle mouse button to scale the viewport to see the amplitude and I'm going to lower down the strength of this and I'm going to change the scale also you can see it creates a nice um, nice bending a nice um, how can I say a nice uh, offset the issue I have now is that it's not being cycled so I think I can add no I cannot add I cannot blend this so no apparently apparently we cannot um, we cannot mix that so let's do it by hand so here I'm going to frame 4 maybe move a bit by auto king so I need to go back to my timeline I'm going to go back here just move a bit the idea is to add more life to the camera and the last frame is going to be the first frame so you can see that here it's maybe too much so I'm going to go back here too and now you can go back in the curves and for all the curves um, we can for this one flatten flatten it maybe we can remove the Euler and scale by pressing X selecting the, the, the channel and pressing X and I'm going to flatten my curves here flatten the curves here too just to remove a bit the effect pressing dot to focus on okay let's select everything back let's select this key press dot to focus on it s and y and y to to scale down the the motion you can see it adds a very subtle kink in the camera we can render everything again and try to see how it works pressing ctrl f1 to see the result I have too much motion on on this axis um, uh, no sorry I have too much motion in the up and down axis so the Z so I'm going back to the Z select everything press dot you can see here okay like this I think it looks much nicer I can save 
I'm not sure with the the colors in the <laughs> in the back. <laughs> I can re-render everything, but you know what? This time I'm going to render full resolution to see if everything looks right in terms of motion blur, and then we are going to add a touch of um, of compositing, uh, and we are going to call uh, this tutorial done. <laughs> So you can see the results right now in the player of Blender. The camera is really, really subtle as you can see, but it adds a bit of, uh, of life to, to the thing. Um, I'm, I'm not really liking the, the bloom, so I'm going to remove it. I think it's, it is not very subtle. Okay, and um, so now I think that, okay, let me just try one one last thing with those eyes. So, no, they, they are good where, where they are, I think. Okay, so now I'm going to go in the compositing section I'm going to click use node to see the result. I'm going to press control shift click to click to create a viewer node. And I'm going on top of that, pressing V and Alt V, you're going to zoom and unzoom the, the background. And now you can add, for instance, a color balance, a color balance node. We're going to just a touch change the the values, we are going to push the reds, push the violet into the into the shadows and push the turquoise into the midpoint. And of course I can lower down the factor for all of this. And I can render this final compositing in in the in the end like this. So let's try with this. And I think again I've changed my mind. I want a background that is not blue. <laughs> this is going to take me a lot of time to choose to decide what are the best colors. Maybe green. I don't like that much green but no. Let's bring orange back. Usually I put my backgrounds for my small shots. I put them or in orange, so. Before going further, I want to do something else. Uh, <laughs> again, it's not that I've changed my mind, but it's that I think it's going to be much better. So yes, in, in fact, it's that I've changed my mind. But I'm going to select my camera uh, back. I'm going to remove the keys that I've added for the noise because I, for me it's not looking that, that, that great. But I'm going to make my character walk around the scene. So in order to do this, what I want to do is I want to go in what we call the NLA editor. So I'm going to add another uh, tab here and I'm going to select the nonlinear animation editor. And as you can see, we have the rig action and the rig action is the name of the uh, action in which we were animating in Blender. An action is like a clip, if you want. And the default name is the name of the object and uh, action at the end. So we can go here in the dop sheet and we can go to action editor and rename this walk cycle. And you will see that it changes for walk cycle here. So this is the clip that is not on the NLA. We want to add it on the NLA. The NLA is like a edit um, uh, edition timeline, if you want, for animation. And we're going to click on this icon to push this clip on the timeline. So what we want to do is maybe increase the number of uh, time that we have, let's say 150, why not? And for this walk cycle, we are going to go in the 
um, we are going to change its settings. So you can see that the frame start is 1 and the end uh, is 30, but we want it to be 25. And I also want to repeat this animation clip. So here, oh, okay, sorry, I'm, I'm, I, I was wrong. The, the start is 1 here, the frame start of the clip, and the end is 25. And what I want to do is to uh, repeat this clip uh, as much as possible. So I'm going to extend even more. And you can see that it's doing the same thing for us. It's basically repeating the, the, the action. Okay, so here I'm not rendering in real time. Uh, let me remove this window. Um, or no, let me come back here. But in fact, what I will do is I will go in the scene options. So I think it's there. Not the scene, the render option, sorry. And you have a simplify checkbox here that will give you access to the maximum number of subdivision that you have, that you want. So I'm going back to zero. This is going to accelerate the frame rate. And here you can see that I have my final frame rate. So if I want to change, for instance, the, the time this, um, this is playing, here I have the playback speed, uh, playback scale. I can increase the, the time and you can see that my character is walking much slower. This is not usually something that you want to play with a lot because usually you should animate right from the start. But in my case, I'm, I'm going to lower to lower a bit the scale by increasing here the playback scale to something like 1.048. It's going to be OK. And one thing that I want to do now is I want to bring back the uh, root, um, the root of my uh, rig, and I'm going to animate this character going from there in front of the camera and going out. Okay, so I'm going to go in the action editor, creating a new action, calling it root motion, and I'm going to place my character outside of the view. And this is why it's important to have a root, a root bone. Something like this. I'm going to place it right there and I'm going to uh, insert a location key. I'm going to go to the frame 1 and 50 and I'm going to put my character outside the view and insert a, a, a key. I think that this is going to be all right. Maybe the character should be rotated a bit more. So I'm going to remove this key. And I can be very precise in the alignment of my root motion. So I can press G and Y and Y again to go into local mode. And I can put another key here. The problem is that you will see that my character will ease in, ease out in terms of its displacement. I don't want this. So I'm going to select both my key and set them as linear by pressing T. So just I'm putting back the shortcut, sorry. So you can see that now what we have to do, uh, so it's working because the root motion is applying on top of the other cycle. And because in the cycle we didn't touch the root motion, it's basically adding everything together, okay? So here I need just to see if my I don't want the, the, the foot to be sliding. So let me go in the view of this character. You can see it's sliding too much. So what you can do for this is maybe you can bring back the keys. You need to find the best keys for this motion. Sometimes it's maybe a bit more.
something like this maybe let me un uh, let me disable the every option there my character is still sliding a bit so i'm going to push the key a bit further away Still sliding. It's getting much better. Maybe I'm sliding more. By the way, I'm pressing Control Space to maximize the window. I think I'm close to have it work. Okay, let's try like this. Uh, one thing that I want is to be sure that the character is out of the frame. So I will put my last frame like this and I will render uh, a 50% or 20% version of this. Uh, I'm going to save, Control F12 to render everything. And this is going to take a bit of time, so I'm going to pause the, rend the recording. So it took approximately 30 seconds and 20 person scale. So you can see the character walking around and we have, like we can play it infinitely like if the character was doing a, a, a round trip. The only issue I have is you can see the, the shadow at the beginning pop, popping there. Um, so maybe, uh, maybe in your case you want to, to push the the character a bit, uh, a bit back in the, <laughs> a bit back in the in the um, in the scene. Uh, it's still sliding. <coughs> I can uh, try to fix that, but I will spend a lot of time in this tutorial. I think you get the idea. So I don't want to bother you bother you with uh, with too much. Uh, time in this tutorial I know it's already pretty long uh, the last thing that I may want to do is coming back to the to my camera I'm going to go back in the timeline here removing also key and maybe I'm going to shut this character a bit more to the side like this. We can also change the aspect ratio to have um, a less high viewport. Move it, move the camera a bit to, to, the, to, the, to the top. You can see it looks better. And one thing that I want to do is just at this point, I want when the character flies there, pass by there, I want to add a location keyframe move back a bit, uh, uh, sorry, a rotation keyframe, move back a bit, tilt the camera a bit, and bring it back. So rotation, something like this, but much more fast. And much more subtle. And then maybe using auto key. I can add some random keyframes at the end. It's just to To add some motion maybe in fact you know what instead of that i'm going from there to maybe add some in fact let, let's let's try to do that with the noise again i'm going to try to to do um 
by location adding a location keyframe here and I'm going to try to create a noise effect by going so let me just collapse the by right clicking in the middle collapse the NLA and I'm going here to select the z-axis of the camera adding back in the modifier modifiers a noise so it's going to tremble a lot from up and down I'm going to change the strength and the scale and use the inf uh, restrict the range um, here you can see that I can start the noise at some location and then it's a bit later and this is going to create w w if, if you if you choose the right in and out this is going to create a, a smooth blend for your uh, for your camera so as you can see maybe it's not if I'm selecting the axis It's quite strange that it goes not in the right direction. I'm quite surprised, to be honest with you. This is the X, this is the Z. It should be on the Z location. If I'm moving it up or down, it should go up or down and not sideways. So maybe I've made something wrong. Let me remove the X and the Y location. Okay, we have now the, the right motion. It's just a, a small head, head bob if you want. Maybe I'm going to start it from a bit before and make it after there. We're not filling it that much in the end result. I can push it a bit more to the right and maybe I will increase the strength just to see the motion a bit more. Okay, let's decrease the strength of everything. Let's push the let's push this frame a bit down so we can see the feet the foot sorry the idea is just to make a like a, a wave effect when the character is passing by so maybe it's and increase the depth a bit to make more more noise maybe it's too much too let's increase again the, the strength again maybe it's too much and maybe change the scale again so it's less present Maybe something like this. We want to feel the in motion coming, you see. We want to feel that it's coming from far away. And that and that at the end it it tapers down a bit. Okay, just something like this is a nice touch to add at the end, creating a more a, a, light, a live camera. So I'm going to render this again in 20% uh, in quality 20% to see how it looks and then uh, I'm going to render that uh, to a better quality and we will end 
uh, this tutorial. So here is the final result with a much more uh, good looking quality. Uh, you can see that the trembling camera adds just a touch of, um, of uh, life to the scene. Um, we can also try, but be careful because this is quite heavy on the machine. <laughs> we can try to do a cycle render. So we are going to choose a frame that is good looking, such as this one. And we are going to switch to cycle cycles and we are going to just for the sake of d doing it we are going to go into denoising and we are going to add in the render the open image denoiser and we are going to, in the performances we're going to choose the gpu if you have one it's much better and we are going to in the performances for the gpu we are going to try with a more uh, important tiling and we are going to open to, to just first before test that in the viewport. You can see that instantly the render will be much better. But of course, it will take a lot of time to render. Um, in this case, you have much nicer reflections. Uh, you can see. But again, with the denoiser, it's taking much more, uh, much less time but you can see that we have a much better definition of, uh, of lighting, etc. But in our case, because the character is not the best ever possible and uh, everything is not uh, uh, to, I would say, a production level, it's more, more like a test if you want, uh, rendering it with EV is already pretty nice. Uh, one thing that you can add if you want so, I'm just going to, to, to show it really quickly you can add uh, volumes um, to your scenes so in this case you just have to create for instance uh, a cube um, that will go inside everything like this and this is going um, to be in the shading tab we can go in in ev we can add a new Prince, a new shader for this, let's call it volume. And we are going to add a principled volume, PSDF, and we, uh, not PSDF, but principled volume, and we're going to add it right there. And now you can lower down the density to 0 0.01, for instance. And in the color, you can change it for something like A reddish tint like this and you can also grab um, you can change the an anisotropy in order to have less uh, sparkles in the reflections and we are going to um, take for instance a 3d texture such as a noise so you can grab the noise texture and you can put the, f the um, uh, a color ramp. You can put the factor here and I'll put the color there. And uh, if you watch carefully and here you make very steep adjustments, you can see that it creates a, uh, like a, a very subtle smoke effect. You can increase the amount of scale. <laughs> And uh, it's quite fun actually, so why not? Why not trying to to use this in our in our render? The only issue with that it's is it's not going to be animated, so you should add a vector a mapping node here in the vector field. Uh, you need to bring back a texture coordinate and plug the generated option here and now with for instance the z uh, not the scale but the z location you can make it move or you can make it move it um, you can make it move like this for instance or even better you can choose to to put an empty in the scene so let's add an empty a sphere for instance and you can pick the volume and you can the volume sorry 
and you can say here uh, you want it to be scaled to the empty so the empty is called empty by default I think and now you can you can animate the empty but it's not working uh, Uh, and you want the object this should work much better okay the scale is too big too important now so let's re let's make it much subtle and you can see that now when i move the empty it's moving the the scene so in into the scene so i can create a, a smoke effect that is going to be animated with it so let's for instance um, uh, put a location there in the timeline so let's go back in the timeline first let's go there press i let's go to the end put it there and let's make it line linear sorry and now when you look back you can see the smoke effect going through your character um, but it's not going to to tile perfectly in our case so one thing to to make it tile if you want you can also rotate the thing so instead of doing a location you can create a 180 degree rotation on itself so you can go to rotation here on frame on the last frame 164 you go in the in the rotation here you put 360 and you insert a key and it was the y actually it was the y location i wanted uh, the z location the z rotation sorry so 360 and you add by pressing insert key you add you add the the key and if we look at the empty and this viewport you can see it's going to do a 360 degree uh, rotation maybe in our case it's too fast oh i've removed my keys sorry i only want to unlock the other key and put it in the center of the and then you you make your keyframe linear so you can see that it's creating a sort of okay motion, but it's it, it it's going to cycle. So the the cycling is going to work, but uh, if you want uh, to make it with less speed and still cycle, you'll have to find other ways. Um, but in this case, it's going fine uh, maybe the smoke is too pr too much uh, too much intense in terms of color so the more you go to the dark the less uh, the smoke is going to be visible so we can adjust just a touch like this adding more details, changing a bit more the scale. It's just to make a, a very subtle effect. In the end. So I don't understand why it's not working fine in terms of uh, displacement, but because maybe I've done something wrong, I don't know. Object transform. I've only changed the. Oh. I've only changed the. The the Z. So this frame should be equal to this frame, in terms of noise. Apparently it's the. It, apparently it's right, but I don't know why. But you know what? I'm going to re-render the scene just to to see uh, in a very low resolution, like twenty percent. Just to see if we, if it's interesting to add the, the, the smoke effect. Of course, if if it was a, a more uh, 
final feature film animation, you won't do uh, f uh, fog effects like this. You will simulate them using the smoke uh, simulator engine, Mentaflow in this case, in the case of Blender. But um, just as a small trick, or you would even render it on plates and and composite the fog on top of it. But uh, just in this case, because it looks funny, maybe we can add a bit of smoke. Let's just check the animation in the end. You can see it took approximately 24 seconds. It's going to, it's, it's too abrupt <laughs> in terms of, uh, in term of uh, animation. So yes, I'm going to go back to, I'm going to remove the MT first. I'm going to select my volume remove the animation that I had on my volume. So I had, I had something on my volume. Okay, so I'm re removing the keys. And here I'm going to remove the noise and just let, and remove this too, and just let the fog be what it is, uh, something like this. And in the settings here for the fog, the volumetric, you can choose where it starts so you can push the fog a bit further or closer, like you see, like like you want. Uh, we can push it a bit closer, creating a more nice, uh, nicer atmosphere. You can also change the color, maybe like this. It, it's going, it's it, it's looking nice. Adding a bit of blue in the in the in the scene. Maybe I can lower down the scene, the, the effect. Let's try to push it towards the purples. And let's lo lower it down a bit. And you can see in the volumetrics, you can also choose to have a better um, volumetric by changing the tile size so two is going to be better uh, lower size increase vram and use aging quality so let's stay with four and you can also increase the samples but in our case it's going to be okay we can also also add volumetric shadows this is going to add uh, more realistic lighting and uh, you know what let's go back with uh, i'm looking for a nice color that could, that could help us define the, the smoke a bit more and uh, the density is maybe too much let's decrease it to 0.6 okay so I'm going to render this at 80% and uh, we are going to watch the result together okay so and here is the final result of uh, this course. Uh, it was a bit long, but um, this is the time it takes to create something like this, actually. Of course, there are tons of things that uh, could be improved. Uh, I wanted just to create a, a complete tutorial from A to Z in one, uh, in one shot. So this is why um, we spend less time on polishing the rig, the animation, and the modeling etc but with this tutorial you should have all the knowledge now to uh, be able to uh, push this exercise a bit further um, you know how to model simple shape you know how to texture inside blender for instance in this case it should have been better to texture in another software such as krita or uh, photoshop uh, we've created a rig for instance with a lot of uh, with a lot of controls, uh, with not a lot of controls, for instance, for the ears, it was quite a bit, uh, it was a bit of a pain to animate. So um, you could, for instance, use uh, FK controls for the ears that would have been a bit better. Uh, you could um, add, um, you could add eye keys, for instance, in the legs to, to make them easier to animate and split the body into multiple uh, parts using multiple stretch constraints. But again, I wanted to 
go through the rig as fast as possible for um, someone beginner to intermediate in, in to for sorry for a, a beginner to intermediate user um, and for the lighting it was also done pretty quick a lot of the thing that we have done are following again a very iterative process it's the more you put time into it the more and you play with what you are creating the more um, effective your uh, final result will be but uh, for tutorial i think it's uh, good enough i hope you enjoyed this tutorial um, congratulations to have finished this tutorial because uh, it takes a lot of time and effort and um, you really need to put hard work when doing this kind of stuff so uh, if you watch this video uh, in its entirety so good job well done um, and uh, i hope you're going to do really cool projects don't hesitate to subscribe if it's not already the case if you don't want to miss other videos that i'm going to do and um, i wish you the best of luck for your projects see you Thank you.